You there, Liam? Test. One, two. Check one, two. This Tallahassee Tiger Sports Broadcast is brought to you by Tallahassee Automotive, Montgomery Regional Airport, First Community Bank, Community Hospital, Home Health and Hospice, Louise Chicken Fingers, Neptune Technology Group, CBS Bank, HDD Broadband, Parker Tire and Service Center, that, Tallahassee Superfoods, see if I was getting audio. World Station, Bath Innovations of Alabama, Barbecue, More Wealth Management, Tallahassee Power and Equipment, First Man. Church of Tallahassee, Guardian Union. Tallahassee, I don't hear. Where's Brad? Tallahassee, True Valley. Hey, yeah, yeah. Eagle oh, yeah. State Farm Insurance Brad Agent Davis. Albert L. State Farm Insurance Agent Sears. District Attorney Mike Sears. This the other day. Now, obviously, I don't hear anything. I don't understand it. New Stone Realty. That's it. There he is. See if this kills it. Did this help? No, it nope. Good. All right. One, two, one, two. It's misting with the sun out. Awesome. Here we are, back for another home date and a region matchup at Jay Hotterod Stadium. The Tigers taking on Beauregard tonight on WTLS, Tallahassee Times TV, and Spectrum. Sun is out, but it is raining. I think that means the devil's uh, getting beaten or something by his wife with a frying pan, or is that the something other way around? That, some of that I can't action. remember that one. Anyway, <laughs> just a light mist in the air. Uh, still hot, even though it's 78, it is humid. But we got a 7 o'clock kick starting up for you here as we get ready for some football tonight and bring you the CBNS Bank countdown to kickoff. Michael Butler, Philip Nelson, Stephen Oz Osborne, and the Tiger Nation crew here. Brad Davis will join us shortly. Of course, Leanne Butler back in the studio working the controls. The Tigers hoping for better things. They come in 0-3 tonight after a tough loss again last week at Clay Central, opening region play. Borgard, too, lost a toughie, a game that went to double overtime against Valley, and uh, they meet tonight for the 32nd time in the series here at O'Brien Stadium. It's going to be a fun pregame tonight. They're going to honor a couple of state champions and Macy Stewart as well as Lan Bell. Halftime is going to be fun too in addition to the Pride of Tallahassee. It'll be the old Pride of Tallahassee, maybe even some of that long blue line doing an alumni performance as well. So I uh, hope you can come out and join us tonight for this one with Tallahassee and Beauregard. Well, we're hoping for a better start. It's been an ugly start to the season. It's also been an ugly start to all these games. Tallahassee has been outscored in the first half in three games, 87 to nothing. Let's see if we can get some points on the board in the first half tonight. As a matter of fact, they haven't scored a point in any game yet until the fourth quarter. It's I've not. never called a game in a, se a season like this before that we've had with all the years we've covered this team. It's just been a terrible start, and uh, guys want to see some turnaround for sure. Um, you're right. It's, it's kind of hard to believe that we're three games in, and we've not scored a point 
until the fourth quarter in any of the three ball games. That's that's um, uh, not a good statistic if you're going to win ball games. So that's one of the things you know I'm looking for tonight is can we come out of the gates and get something going? Because if you think about it, last week when we were at uh, Clay Central, our first drive was actually going really well. And we got down, you know, close enough to attempt a field goal. We missed it, but we actually drove the ball. Um, not saying that it would have made a difference in the ball game, but it would certainly been nice to actually get some points on the board in the first quarter to maybe see if it could change our momentum a little bit. But, um, you know, you never know how the game's going to go, but that's the thing I'm looking for. Can we drive the ball early in the game, get first downs, even if it's just to get close enough and maybe get a field goal. Um, but we got to get some points in the first half. We got to figure out some kind of strategy and some kind of game planning to get it into the end zone or get field goals, to get some kind of momentum, to get something positive going for our offense. Um, and I think that's one of the biggest keys to the game. Yeah, it's going to be tough. You, what, what Tulsa's got to do is try to find a way that they can dictate some of the game. Maybe not all of it, but the opposing teams have been the ones dictating every step of the games thus far. So, you know, that's – hopefully they'll regroup. The guys at least aren't, aren't, aren't giving up. So, we'll see. Getting close. Ed, the insult to injury, uh, some more players uh, knocked out last week in that loss in Lionville. Uh, one notably is uh, gone for the season. Unfortunately, Bryson Rigsby will not uh, be playing, and uh, his injury uh, looks like it's a season ender. He, of course, uh, played quarterback on offense and played in the secondary on defense, and that's a tough break for him. Uh, also, a couple other guys possibly will not see action tonight. We're just not sure about their status. And it's Jaden McKenzie and Joseph Hooks, uh, who both uh, were banged up last week. One positive note is that Christian McCary has been cleared, and he is expected to go tonight. So uh, uh, that's more guys that went down than we're getting back, but it's still uh, that's what you got to deal with for tonight. Yeah, it's good to see um, Christian come back and be a part of our offense because he's, you know, he's a strong running back, and we saw some good things out of him actually in the first ball game against Real Town, and that's even with him being banged up pretty good. And I actually spoke to him today, and I asked him how he was feeling, and he said he was feeling good. And um, of course, he still got a little bit of a limp, but not near, you know, near as bad as what it was. But he said he's ready to go and excited about playing tonight. Those are tough to get over, those high ankle sprains. It's, yeah, it kind of lingers. You just deal with it that's usually. Right. It's, it's not going to go away completely, but he's going he's gonna to play. Uh, that's what we were told at least uh, for tonight. Well, uh, we'll take a quick break. we got the Coach Battles interview coming up, plus plenty more from J.E. Hotterbrine Stadium. Hope you can come out and join us tonight. Uh, tickets at the gate and through GoFan. Get yours, and we'll have the matchup for you right here on WTLS, Tattlesea Times TV, and Spectrum. More of the CBNS Bank countdown to kickoff coming up. Two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Michael, how's this sound? One, two. One, two, one, two. Yeah, I got you. Sounds good.
Yes, one. Just one, two, three. We haven't really focused on Beauregard this week. You know, we're working on ourselves. And, uh, you know, I know the, the scoreboard to the common fan doesn't show anything other than we're getting beat. But, uh, you know, we, we've, we've shown improvements when we sit down and break down the films and watch the stuff. You know, we're getting better each week. We got better last week. You know, 
know, we did some good things. Testing, one, two, three, one, two, three. And, uh, you know, and, and we're just going to have to keep improving. You know, Michael, there's, you know, I, this is kind of uncharted territory for me and, and everybody else on this team. So, you know, we're, we're dealing with it. Uh, the, the thing I can say is that all of our kids and coaches, you know, all of us have kept good attitudes, you know, because the thing is you really, you really have two choices in situations like this, and you're going you're gonna to have situations like this. It ain't always rosy. It doesn't matter what you do, what chosen field of endeavor, there's going to be tough times, and you can either quit, which is the easy, and that's really the way to, you know, that's what most people do is they quit, or you can get, you can go to work and, and keep keep plugging along and keep doing the things that you know are going to create success down the road. And, uh, you know, that's what our kids have done. You know, that's what they've chosen to do. And, uh, you know, I'm proud of them. Uh, been a lot of, uh, you know, criticisms and all that, and, you know, it doesn't affect me, you know, it really doesn't, but, uh, you know, I know 15 through 18-year-olds, you know, they get to hear enough of it, it can create some stuff, but our kids have done a good job uh, coming to work, getting out there, practicing, we've had good practices, great attitudes, and, uh, you know, it's eventually going to uh, show some success, you know, we just, it's a very tough road, I mean, you're talking about four teams that, you know, right out of the gate that are really, really, really good. And even on a good year, you have a tough time, you know, uh, playing with them. So, you know, but we're, we've, we've got a good plan together. Uh, our kids have, have out there, you know, yesterday we had a really good practice. Everybody was almost in the places they need to be. Luckily, we've got the, today to practice, and we'll clean up everything. And uh, then we're going to go play football. You know, we'll be at home. Uh, it is a tough opponent. They're very athletic. Uh, you know, we've we've had, uh, uh, I guess, patch kids in. We've got some that are injured, some that we're getting back. You know, we'll have Christian McCary back this week. But Joseph Hooks has kind of wobbled a little bit. You know, he's got a little bit of an ankle issue. And uh, Jaden McKenzie, we're waiting today to see. He's, he's going to the doctor. He uh, got a mild concussion uh, in the Clay Central game, and he's been out. And so, you know, we've just uh, – We've, we've patched kids in. We've, uh, luckily, we've got a bunch of younger kids that are playing a lot of football, you know, which you wouldn't see. You know, actually, the guy that won the defensive line award this week is a ninth grader. Wow. You know, Vincent Diego. So, you know, we've got a lot of younger kids that are getting a lot of playing experience. And that's going to help out down the road. But it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a learning lesson right now. And uh, we're having to learn against really top-notch uh, competition. So, you know, we're going to go out there and play, and, uh, you know, and, and the, the kids, you know, like I said, they've, they've done what they need to do, and we've done what we need to do, and hopefully it's going to show some success down the road. You know, it's it's been a struggle. Everybody knows that. Uh, the, these things happen, and they come in cycles, and you haven't had any of this. You're right. Uh, you've never had a season with less than, you know, three wins in 26, seven years as a head coach. I looked at that. Uh, one of them was a COVID year. It cost you a couple forfeits here, but that's the worst year you've had here, so... And we got a lot of season left. I understand there's six more games to play, so we don't know what's going to happen going forward. But I did see some things last week, as you talked about. Uh, the opening drive last week was a very nice drive that unfortunately ended in a missed kick. But uh, sometimes you got to take those baby steps, don't you, to see progress, right? I mean, it's, you know, coaching is not a real difficult thing. You go out there and do the things that you know that you've learned that have created success, you work hard, you put the kids – Really, the, the whole ideal in coaching is to put the kids in the best place so that they can have success themselves and they can create success for the team. And that's what you're supposed to do, and put them in those places. And, uh, you know, that, that's that's been what we're trying to do. You know, that's what we're, you know, we, we're getting them in the places, and they're eventually going to start, you know, making some plays and doing some things. I, I thought we got a lot better. You know, what, well, the one thing that we've worked on this week and it is a fundamental, I mean, it is, it's tackling. Yeah. We did not do a really good job. We had a lot of kids in place. Uh, when you go back and watch the film, we had a lot of kids in place that had the opportunities, and we just didn't tackle well. But that's something you can improve on. You know, how do you improve on it? Go out there and tackle. And yeah. we've done it for three days now, and, I mean, we've done it live. It has been, you know, uh, we had a tackle, sir, you know, just all the stuff. You know, we're just trying to improve on the fundamentals because when you go back and look at the whole picture of it, uh, 
it has nothing to do with formation. It has nothing to do with motions and all this. It comes down to blocking the tackle. And uh, we haven't done a real good job of either one of them. So that's what we're kind of focused on is, is going back to the fundamentals, making sure we're sharp on the little things that make the big difference, and making sure we're good on special teams. You know, I thought, uh, you know, we did a pretty good job on special teams Friday night, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, and so – as long as we continue to show improvement, I think we're going to be in good shape. And so, you know, hopefully we can go out there and put a, you know, put a solid game together and uh, tackle and block like we're supposed to and hang on to the football, no turnovers, that kind of stuff right there. And, uh, you know, then we'll see what happens. You uh, are playing this Borgard team that did drop a game last week in their first region matchup versus Valley in overtime. What happened in that game? They turned the ball over. First play of the game, Beauregard turned the ball over. Valley on the 18-yard line, but it was, you know, they did not play uh, really well. Uh, they had a lot of, a lot of, a lot of penalties uh, and things like that. And Valley's a very athletic team. I mean, it's not like they're a Scrouts now. They, they have a really good football team. And when you do stuff like that with a really good football team, you know, it usually doesn't turn out well for you. So, you know, and it went into double overtime. Valley had to stop them. I believe they were on. Six yard line, and they tried kind of a Tim Tebow jump pass into the end zone. And Valley had about three of them going on the tight end across there and uh, knocked it down, you know. But it was that close. I mean, even as even even though Beauregard had made a lot of mistakes during the game, just like we've made and that kind of stuff, it was still neck and neck all the way to I believe the second overtime. And uh, you know, so. It, they're, they're a good team. Beauregard, you know, used to maybe 10, 15 years ago, probably was not a really good team, you know, but when Smitty got there, they started improving, and he got them to a certain certain level, and then Rob Carter, you know, won a state championship there, and then Coach Jones has come in. You know, they're just a, they're, they're a really tough athletic team, and now they're used to winning. And yep. so it makes, makes it a difficult opponent. Yeah, they get to play in the Champions Challenge or Kickoff Classic, as it's called. The HSA puts on against the Krampus. Selma, the against Selma, the, yeah, the first played both of them last year, so yeah, they uh, they handled them pretty easily. This is their first loss. One thing I did notice, I got their roster, and uh, oh, they've got a lot of kids on that team. I went and actually counted. I think I counted 85. Uh, that's just kind of a rare thing to see for a, a Class 5A school. Yeah, it's a good thing they can only put 11 of them out there on the field <laughs> yeah, right. because we'd be in trouble. We don't have a 52, but. Uh, you know, yes, they we we kind of noticed that about their roster too. You just keep reading and reading and reading and no, scrolling yeah, even had up, a duplicate number reading. on there one time. Yeah, yeah. so uh, you know they they've got a lot of interest. You know, who wouldn't be interested in coming out there and you know uh, uh, being on a team that has some success? I mean, that's that's part of it. And uh, you know, uh, Coach Jones has done a good job. Their staff has, and so you know, uh, it, it, it's it, it's easy to see, and and that's good to see because. Nowadays, there are so many other things for kids to do that, you know, football's tough. That's tough. There isn't anything fun, you know, I, I say fun, there isn't anything that people, they wouldn't go practice football unless they were made to go practice football. Now, they'll go do other things, but they won't, you know, it's, let's go get some pads on, you know, it's Sunday afternoon. Let's get some pads on, just go out there and hit each other for 30 minutes. You know, that's, that's not natural. And so... You know, when you have kids that, that enjoy playing and enjoy the contact and enjoy the, you know, the team, uh, enjoy the teammates and that kind of stuff, it makes it nice. So, you know, they've obviously got it going on. Our kids are home together. Our kids, you know, doing the things we ask them. And that, that's that's rare this day and time because usually, you know, with all the, you know, there's a, there's a lot of outside criticism. And, you know, it, it makes it difficult. Because when you're young, you want people to like you. You want, you want to be popular. You want to do all this. And so it makes it tough. So, you know, I'd say we've got a bunch of uncommon and unordinary uh, kids on our team, and that makes it really good. You know, I'm, I'm proud of them. I know we're 0-3, but I'm proud of them for the type of person that they are and the type of teammate they've been. And uh, I think we're going to have success down the road uh, because of that. Well, good luck this week. As always, we appreciate your time. We'll talk next uh, week. Hey, yes. the wake-up call. I got on a website and found 
This jacket for eleven dollars and ninety nine cents. This is a twelve dollar jacket with a dollar tax, free shipping. This is thirteen dollars, man. I'm telling you, I got one it more. It looks like a fifteen dollar. Oh, get out of here. Chris Plant. It's a filthy, corrupt city, Washington D.C., and our government is very corrupt. It's like East Germany during the Cold War level corruption here. River Region Sports. I know of a couple of coaches who have already said, I've had enough. They don't want to fool with it anymore. They said, the money ain't worth it. When you're putting in 70-hour weeks every week. Chuck Oliver. Tallahassee, I was like, uh, Tallahassee. Tallahassee Tigers. I coached there one night when I was with Notasaga. WTLS, score 94 and hit 106. Rock and Jocks. Hospice services are considered the model for quality, compassionate care for people facing a life-limiting illness. At Community Hospice Care, it is our desire that you and your loved ones receive excellent care at the end of life's journey. As your only locally owned and operated nonprofit hospice, we strive daily to make a difference in the quality of life that you have. We provide expert medical care, pain management, nursing assistant care, emotional and spiritual support expressly tailored to the patient's needs and wishes. When a patient is admitted to hospice, we also pay for the patient's medications and supplies related to their diagnosis. Support is provided to a patient's loved one as well. Community Hospice Care can provide care in a patient's home, nursing home, or assisted living. Our team includes expert medical doctors, nurses, social workers, chaplain services, and so much more. Because we are your local hospice agency, all of our staff is local. This means fast on-call response time for you and your loved ones. Community Hospice Care of Tallahassee. Compassionate care in difficult times. Hi, this is Brad Mason, City President of First Community Bank of Central Alabama. I would like to take this opportunity to invite each of you to stop by and visit us at one of our two convenient locations in the Tallahassee community. We are located at 526 Gilmer Avenue and at 28 Neptune Road. Our friendly staff will be happy to help you with any of your financial needs. We have a wide variety of deposit products such as checking, savings, money market, and CDs. If you're wanting to buy a boat or automobile or thinking of refinancing your home, Come see one of our loan officers, and we'll be glad to assist you. First Community Bank has been serving the Tallahassee community for over seven years. We are your locally owned hometown community bank. Please call us at 283-2299 or visit us on the web at fcbca.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. <laughs> Football and barbecue. What a combination. When it's football and Maypop's barbecue, you know you've got a winner. When you're planning for the game, be sure to mix in some Maypop's. Pre-order at maypopsbarbecue.com. Pick up at their East Tallahassee location on Notasoga Road or at their food truck. See the schedule by following Maypop's on Facebook. Maypop's Wood-Fired Barbecue, the fan favorite. If you're involved in an auto accident, City Collision can help. Contact Dana Haynes. Dana has three decades of experience with paint and body work. From minor fender benders to major repairs, see Dana for a lifetime warranty on all repairs. Insurance claims welcome. And City Collision offers truck accessories. Located on the Tallahassee Highway, just past the Y, City Collision. Hey, it's Brad Park and Jamie Bush at Parker Tire and Service Center. It's tailgating time. Don't let car trolls ruin your road trips. Let us help you with new Michelin, Uniroyal, BF Goodrich, and Toyo tires. Whether you're headed to the big game or just across town, change your oil, lube, and filter. And don't forget a checkup for your engine. Parker Tire and Service Center. 1508 Gilmer Avenue in Tallahassee. Here's Mark Bell with some exciting news from Bell Contracting. Yeah, we've opened up a new group of our business on behalf of the Tallahassee. We've really enjoyed some success. And the I know this is the season to start putting in the pools as we move out of pool season. Kind of funny you bring that up because pool season for us is this time of year. We're doing pools that will fit basically any budget we've got them from 10 feet long all the way up to 60 feet. How do they get in touch with you? Bell Contracting on Facebook, bellcontractingllc.com on the Internet. We'd love to visit with you. Football and tailgating, two great traditions in the South. Here's another one that makes them better. Shopping at Tallahassee Superfood. Stock up on great tailgating items that make football watching even better. 
And if you're the host of a big party on Saturday, do it right with great steaks or boneless chicken breast or a grilling favorite, smoked sausage. Throw on the fixins and you're ready for football. Get it all at cost plus 10% at either location. Tallahassee Superfoods on Gilmer Avenue or on Notice of the Road in East Tallahassee. Wherever you want to fly, the Montgomery Regional Airport wants you to get there with nonstop destinations to Atlanta, Charlotte, Dallas, and Washington, D.C. MGM is your gateway to adventure. Visit flymgm.com to book your next experience. I'm Eli Gold. Roll with the tide on Score 94 and Hit 106. All right, Michael. All right. Yep. Back here at Jay Hanabron Stadium getting ready for Tallahassee and Beauregard tonight. And uh, plenty of other games going on tonight, too, in high school football, including some games – that have been played already in the state. And I was just looking uh, last night, of course, in Crampton Bowl, it was Wee Tumpkin Park Crossing, and Bear Woods got his first W this year as the Indians took care of the Thunderbirds by a score of 37 to 14. That game, of course, in Montgomery last night, big win, Wee Tumpka, who had started out uh, 0 for 3, but they got their first win last night in that one. Uh, games tonight AISA, Lounge at Edgewood. We've got some uh, AHSAA matchups uh, to watch that we'll keep updated throughout the evening and in the school board show by City Collision to follow. Notice Saga at Maplesville is a pretty big one in 1A usually. Battle of the Devils, the Blue Devils and the Red Devils. You got Goshen at Realtown. That's another big region matchup over at Realtown tonight. Daveville going on the road to Sachs. And Montgomery, Trinity, and Alabama Christian. Montgomery Academy is on the road down south at Dale County. Greensboro, tra Greensboro travels to St. James tonight. Catholic on the road at Slocum. Geneva at Booker T. Washington in Tuskegee. It's Selma at Hopeful. That's Ooh. a pretty good matchup for the Bulldogs. Clay Central and Elmore County in our region. Sylacauga also in our region at Valley. Lanier at Pike Road. Carver at Russell County. And Auburn at Jag. Some of the matchups, including this one, of course, Borgard and Tallahassee. And I did want to talk about the region. I know we've only played one game, but... We, we were talking about the buildup for this Elmore County matchup with Clay Central tonight, both undefeated. And uh, we're going to see if Elmore County truly has arrived uh, tonight. I know it's just one game in, but uh, you, you kind of can measure where your program is when you go up against Danny Horn's much. That's, that's right. Yeah, I mean, you'll see. They, they've um, – what is this, uh, third year? Uh, or, uh, second year for Kyle Caldwell. Second year. Yeah. So, you know, you, you'll see you, you, when you've got somebody coming in like that, like Clay Central, that's always uh, got that history and they, they always play big and fast, uh, you'll know what you've got at the end of the night. Um, I, I don't know. The only good thing that they've got is, is Clay Central's got to come there. So they're at home at and they, least. Yeah. And they played them five so, times uh, in their history. Uh, they have not ever beaten them uh, – of course, uh, we talked about this last week when we went to Lionel to play that Tallahassee's the only team in this region that's ever beaten Central of Clay County, that's which right. is a wild thing to think about. Uh, uh, the Coach Battles talked about that some last week uh, with a couple of victories. And really, those victories w really weren't close. I mean, Tallahassee, the, the wins that they had, they dominated those two wins, didn't they? Yeah, 1-1 one, one there. Uh, the one uh, where Brandon Banks right. went off and yes. then, uh, obviously won a game here a couple seasons ago, which gave us a share of the 5A uh, region championship, region four, which is what they're in now. Uh, but uh, Elmore County feeling good about their chances tonight. We'll see about that. We'll keep you updated in that one, as well as the game with Silicon and Valley. And, uh, Man, Geneva uh, is yeah. traveling a long way to play a football game. Yes, indeed. Against wow. BTW. BTW, talk about reeling. They've beaten us uh, 44 to nothing. Then they went to Catholic last week and got beat by 50. Whoosh. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah. ooh, I don't know. That's, there's multiple ways to look at that, I guess. Um, is that just, does that just show you how good Catholic is? I think definitely it shows how good they are, yeah. I mean, you know, they've been kind of one of the dominant programs in the tri-area region here, what, for the last three, four, five years. I mean, they've been really dominant. 
over the last few years. And it, it, we've talked about it before, but it's hard to ma imagine that they don't have several state championships in the last couple of years as good as they've been. And um, they've got another dominant team again this year. They're loaded, you know, but did we ever expect that score to be that lopsided against Booker T. Washington with as many athletes as they have on the field? I would have said no way. But, you know, did Booker T. turn the ball over again a bunch of times? Did they get a lot of penalties like they did against us? There had to be some outlying factors for that, that game to get that far out of hand. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's hard to believe. I know how good Booker T looked to us that they could go and get beat that bad. Boy, what a disparity in uh, two weeks uh, you see from both sides of it. Yeah, that uh, that is wild to believe. But, yeah, it's uh, it's Catholic. They've been that good. So, uh, the game of the week this week from Ben Taylor. Flat Rock Falcons taking on Society Hill Saints tonight <laughs> at Society Hill. That's funny. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> nice. You know, we, uh, we honor the late, great C.W., Carl Wayne Mullins, this year, this day, six years ago. And we lost him. He was uh, one of the parts of our broadcast team here. And every time this anniversary, a sad one for us, rolls around, we certainly think about C.W. Uh, miss him. But he, he's always here with us in spirit. Yeah. Nobody, nobody keeps timeouts like C.W. Nope. No. That's the mm. truth. I miss O.C. Dub. You know, that's, I had really just come on and started helping uh, when C. Dub passed away. And so um, we miss him. He was always funny, a lot of fun to be around. and um, Great sport. Yes. And, you know, it landed on this day. That's six years ago that he, was, he went to the hospital. He went in. Uh, he had some issues, and obviously we lost him later. But I remember that day he was – he was already planning out his day. Yep. That morning, he, he had a little situation. He said, I got to get to lunch. We got to eat lunch today at the, at the football show, you know. <laughs> and definitely, he was always a part of everything we did here. Uh, just got these in today. I was able to look at them earlier from uh, John David Lambert, who always gives us the percentage of our pickers in these high school games. And oh. I was just looking to see how people picked in this one tonight. And uh, overwhelmingly, Beauregard, even with most Tallahassee folks picking, uh, picked the uh, Hornets to win tonight by an 87.5% to 12.5% margin. Mm. I don't know if I've ever seen that in one of these uh Well, uh, now maybe back in the 80s. If we maybe were if we were keeping guard. up with it back then with the picks, yes. yes. Yeah. But it's definitely uh, – one-sided with the picking, and I, you kind of understand it with what Tattlesey's had to go through here early, but maybe uh, maybe we'll prove them wrong tonight, at least 87.5% of you. <laughs> I hope so. I'll take. I'll be glad to take a W on that one. Pride of Tattlesey making its way in. You can watch the video on Tattlesey Times TV through YouTube. Courtney Thornton down on the field tonight. We've got two cameras. Philip Beckham up here in the box working that for Tiger Nation. Appreciate their work. Some of the fans have already gotten here. It's going to be a big night. We mentioned the – Alumni band is going to be performing uh, at halftime. Uh, a lot of those folks, uh, think about it, that came back. I, I was over here last night at the rec department doing our pickleball thing, and uh, I couldn't find a parking place. And I looked over, and they said it was over 140 people from uh, bands of old who have come back to perform tonight. That's going to be a fun thing. Hopefully we'll make it a tradition. It was full up. I mean, we came over here to help stock the uh, press box, I mean, the concession stand, and we even got here a little late, and Jennifer wanted to kind of watch, and we were just picking out people from, from past that we knew, and they looked like they were having fun also. It, yeah. it wasn't just a uh, come out and, hey, make an appearance. They were, they were having a good time, and uh, I think it's going to be fun for everybody. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back with more of the CBNS Bank countdown to kick off. Tallahassee Borgard coming up. Touchdown, Alabama! The Tide plays here. A corner, a three-pointer, perfect. The Alabama Crimson Tide. Here comes the throw to the plate. It is late, and Alabama takes a 2 nothing lead. Roll with the Tide. We love it that you love Alabama, and I'll just say roll Tide to you. On WTLS, score 94 and hit 106. Yeah. 
screaming out my name. USSSA Rick League State Championship. In the World Series held in Gulfport, Mississippi. All of us at HDD Broadband are extremely proud to offer our state of the art fiber to the home network. We are now offering residential packages which consist of 250 megabytes for 65 a month, 500 megabytes for 75 a month. One gig for 95 a month and two and a half gigs for 165 a month. We've lowered our residential rates as we committed to in 2022 and have incorporated a one gig service and a two and a half gig service for residential and commercial customers. Current customers may call and adjust their data packages if they wish or enjoy their new adjusted rate based on their current service. Please give us a call at 334-430-0049 to apply for service and information on our new rates. You may add us on Facebook and HDD Broadband to stay up to date on our current locations and updates on pre-registration. Feel free to view our webpage at hddbroadband.com. Another Guardian Credit Union story. Hey, so what are we doing with your hair today? I need a trim, a new dishwasher, and a much-needed vacation. Do you see any grays? Mm, sounds like you need a personal loan. My friend just got a loan from Guardian Credit Union, and he used it to upgrade his kitchen appliances. That's what I need to do. Guardian has great rates and a friendly team that makes payments affordable. Perfect. I guess stylists really can fix everything. Connect with yeah. Guardian for all your lending needs. <laughs> Tallahassee's leading florist is Godwin's Flowers. In the same location Please since 1971, in the East Tallahassee Shopping Center. Godwin's flowers are always fresh and always the highest quality for any occasion. Delivering to most of the surrounding area, open from 8 to 4 weekdays, except Wednesdays, and from 8 to 11 on Saturdays. Godwin's flowers, flowers with a personal touch in the East Tallahassee Shopping Center. Next we have Land Bell. People are talking about revived traditions. It's not football or baseball or basketball, not soccer, volleyball, or lacrosse, but it goes with any sport. It's Louie's Chicken Fingers, 1410 Gilmore Avenue, Tallahassee. Louie's has chicken fingers, wings, catfish, hush puppies, fresh veggies, salads, wraps, and more. Catering is available too. Specials and updates on Facebook at Louie's of Tallahassee. Before the game, after the game, anytime is Louie's time. Louie's Chicken Fingers, 1410 Gilmore Avenue, 991-4366. Right this is Clay Bradley at Eagle Motor Group. We wish you could come by and just see what inventory we got. If we don't have what you need, let us know and we'll see if we can find it. We're glad to be back in Taos and we just want to thank everybody for all the support. This is Eric Gill here at Eagle Motor Group. Just want to let everybody know that we are a preferred dealer for Guardian Max in Alabama State, and 99% of our vehicles are sold under NADA retail. Come by and see us at 1010 Gilmer Avenue, right here in Tallahassee. Go Tigers! With football season here, you know what that means. Christmas is not far off. Your kids have been asking for a four-wheeler, or motorcycle, or even a go-kart. Simply Southern Acres on Highway 229, just two miles off the Tallahassee exit, has 60cc motorcycles with training wheels to 250cc four-wheelers. Put it on layaway, and they'll hold it for the big day. Simply Southern Acres, your power sports dealer. Call 399-0546. Here's the deal. Combining your home and auto insurance with State Farm can help save you money. My name is Logan Steers, and our office is ready to help you combine your auto and home insurance right here in Tallahassee. Drop by our office today at 1409 Gilmer Avenue or visit our website for a free quote at logansteers.com. Hornsby and Son Body Shop. My dad picked it up as a hobby when he was still in the Navy. Once he got out, I followed along with him. We have a great staff. The technology is evolving practically every day. 15, 20 years ago, you know, you would see a concurrence of a same year model car run five, six, seven years. Again, now, our state basically change every Slay. year. Bell we have to keep up that Stewart. technology and kind of move forward. Hornsby and Son Body Shop, 101B Caldwell Street in East Tallahassee. We're talking with Jason Spain of Seppo Cane Tree Service. Jason, no matter the size of the project, you can do it all. That's right, Michael, from a large removal to trimming a few limbs off of a encroaching tree on your roof line to fence rows. Seppo Cane Tree Service is licensed and insured 
with reasonable pricing. That's correct, Michael. Sometimes there's a misnomer that, you know, I can't afford to have this tree removed, but uh, it's probably more fun than anything. Simple Cade Tree Service. Jason, what's that number? 334-467-0083. 467-0083. Simple Cane Tree Service. Are you in the market for a new home, selling yours, or would like to rent? Let New Stone Realty help you. We serve the Tri-County area, offering both sales and property management services. Visit our website for information on featured properties at newstonehomes.com. New Stone Realty LLC, a member of the National Association of Realtors, equal housing opportunity. This is the CBS Bank Countdown to Kickoff. Remember, FBI said equal housing Tennessee High School dance team now performing at midfield. We just honored a couple of state champions, Macy Stewart and Land Bell, as we're 20 minutes away from kickoff. Tennessee and Borgard tonight on WTLS. Tennessee Times TV and Spectrum. The CBNS Bank countdown to kickoff continues. Tennessee Borgard, as we mentioned, this is meeting number 32, 17 14 series advantage for Tennessee. Last year, the Hornets won 14 to 6. We we'll go back to last week. Borgard lost its first game, and that was at the hands of Valley in overtime, 21 to 14. Tallahassee lost at Clay Central, and the score was 41-7. Both of those games kicked off the region slate for the Tigers and the Hornets. So Borgard is now two and one, and 0 and one in the region. Tallahassee 0 and three, and 0 and one in the region. Borgard got to be in the showcase game, the kickoff classic at Crampton Bowl which started the season. They played Selma, a team they played in the first game last year, and uh, took care of business there. It was a big night for them, opening their season, as we did on a Thursday night. And uh, their coach, Justin Johns, is now entering his third season. He had a 10-win season last year. So they're a team that expects to be pretty good. They were preseason top 10 ranked, and uh, they're still holding on to the pole this week in the Class 5A rankings through the Sports Riders Association. Yeah, I'm going to be interested to uh, see what Borgard looks like because we've not really had a chance to see them and not really had a chance to see any of the opponents that they've played. Um, and like you said, they were one of the teams that were picked to contend for the region this year. But, you know, it's, it is a new year, and um, they won 10 games last year. Will they do it again this year? Time will tell. I just, you know, like I said earlier, I want us to come out and focus on having some positive plays and something positive to happen for our team early in the ball game to try to get some momentum early in the game so that hopefully we can build off of that. Yeah, we've talked about it. You know, that that, that ball is a funny shape. It can, it can bounce a lot of different ways. And, um, you know, any given day somebody can beat somebody. You just, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. But uh, – you got to come out and keep playing. I mean, it's no giving up, and it's just the beginning. It's a long season. So. Yeah, uh, Tallahassee struggled offensively. We mentioned uh, they're still looking for their first points in the first half tonight. Uh, one key element of the Borgard offense is their all-state running back, who is a senior coming in this year, Ja'Cory Tarver, who is out. Uh, he was injured prior to the season. And they definitely have missed him. So uh, uh, that's uh, one tough break for the Hornets. Uh, but they got some backups who uh, they expect to fill those voids. Uh, one of them is uh, a pretty speedy back. You know, he uh, certainly struggled with those guys. And it's Kajaden Holloway, number three. Watch out for him tonight as he will uh, try to carry some of the load that Tarver's left behind for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um... We've not really got to see this young man up in close and personal a lot. Um, like you said, he's, he's kind of picking up the load this year. And um, one of the things that we've had issues with is we've allowed every team that we've played, we've allowed their running back to get downhill quick. And we've got to do a better job of penetration one with our defensive line and creating a new line of scrimmage and slowing them down before they get an opportunity to take off and run. Um, and because, you know, we're not a team that's a speed-oriented team. I mean, we've got speed, but 
not some of the speed that maybe we've had in the past. So that, for me, can we hit him in the backfield and slow him up so that he don't make those long runs? Yeah, avoid the big runs because last week we gave up 189 yards uh, to uh, LaDamian Boyd, the running back from Clay Central. He did it on six, six carries. carries yep. uh, had four touchdowns. Uh, the week before, it was E.J. Hall at quarterback for Booker T. Washington who ran up to close to 200 yards on a limited number of carries. Uh, not even double-digit carries, as we saw with Arthur Woods in week one, who went over 200 on just seven carries and scored uh, five touchdowns. It's just, uh, you know, you'll give up, you know, some plays because they're good. But uh, can we give up 25 and 30 yards on average per player and touchdown after touchdown? Whatever we got to do to get them tackled in the open field to avoid that is key. And that's what Coach Mike Battles talked about. He said, we worked on tackling this week. We got to make tackles. And we saw some of that last week that we were there for a play. We just couldn't bring them down. You know, sometimes you got to go back to the basics, go back to fundamentals. And maybe that's just what they've had to do and, and, and refocus. Um, it's... It's a tough task. It's a tall task because, like we've said before, we're, we're, we're smaller and usually we might not be as fast, and we've got a lot of guys that go both ways. So uh, we'll see. I, I mean, I'm hopeful that, like Phillip said, we're going to make a little progress. We're going to have some positives tonight. Uh, it's, like I said, there's a whole season ahead of us. We've got to see what these guys can do, see what the mentality is, and, um, and who knows? You never know what can happen. Yes, uh, that is the case. We'll find out here in a matter of moments. Uh, still a little time left as we get ready for the kickoff with Talisy and Borgard. It's coming up on WTLS Score 94 and Hit 106. Do you know football? Yeah. Are you a prognosticator? <laughs> or do you pick winners based on the uniforms? Oh, boy. Regardless, it's worth giving your best shot. <laughs> Why? There's cash prizes, and everybody's got a chance. Be a part of our football pick'em contest with a season-ending prize pot worth $1,500. Courtesy of Seppo Cane Tree Service, money does grow on trees. Go to TallahasseeTimes.com or 1300WTLS.com to play and for a full list of rules. Come on, get to picking. You could be a winner. Happy pets. <laughs> Happy customers at Urban Tales and Tallahassee. The staff at Urban Tales is amazing. They always do such a great job with Maddie when I take her to be groomed. They are professional, kind, and loving. We are blessed to have them in Tallahassee. We take our dogs to the daycare at Urban Tales, and they love it so much that I can't let them know where we are going until I'm ready to leave the house. Otherwise, they're going to rush me out the door. My dogs Sophie and Sadie love Urban Tales, and they sleep great at night. Come see us at Urban Tales, 305 Barnett Boulevard in historic downtown Tallahassee. My name's Tristan Moon, owner of Moon's <laughs> Barbecue at 563 Jordan Avenue in Tallahassee, Alabama. Moon started back in Talladega, Alabama in the 50s when my granddad ran it at H.T. Moon. And now we're bringing it to Tallahassee to keep the Moon's tradition going. We like to bring great barbecue. We serve everything from pulled pork, ribs, brisket, chicken, mac and cheese, baked bean, potato salad, coleslaw. We do a dessert of the week. We're also actively hiring. Please come see us at 563 Jordan Avenue, Tuesday through Saturday from 11 to 7. Watch the pros work outdoors, and you'll see why they choose Husqvarna Power Equipment for exceptional power and performance, superior precision, and amazing control. Perfect your landscape with the same precision, power, and performance demanded by the pros. Husqvarna, professionally proven outdoor power equipment. Tallahassee Power and Equipment, just past the Y on Highway 14 West. Southeastern Insurance in Tallahassee is a local independent agent that can save you money, residential or commercial. Let them find a competitive rate and start saving now. Autos and trucks, mobile homes, and your family lake property. Plus coverage for all of your summertime lake toys. sea dews boats, ATVs, RVs, and bikes. Call them for a quote on your fishing and hunting lodge. Keep it local and get local service. Southeastern Insurance, LLC in Tallahassee. Call Roger Davidson or Star Cannon today, 334-283-4933. Root your team on in style. The Tiger Paw has you covered with all new designs. Sports apparel for the ball player and the fan. The Tiger Paw does fundraising t-shirts and custom design, screen printing, vinyl, embroidery, and monogramming. 
plus alterations, custom apparel, sports equipment, and team spirit. The Tiger Paw. Open weekdays from 9 to 6 and Saturdays from 9 to 2. Like them on Facebook and visit them in downtown Tallahassee at 101 South Ann Avenue. The Tiger Paw. Instant news. Immediate availability. It's here at your fingertips. TallahasseeTimes.com. Read it online. Follow it on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Stay up to date on all Tallahassee news, sports, socials, classifieds, and photos. Plus, get live video on all social platforms and Tallahassee Times TV on YouTube. Tallahassee Times. TallahasseeTimes.com. WTLS, Tallahassee, Pike Road. Score 94 and hit 106. Rock and Josh. Please join our pledge to the United States flag. Pledge to the captain of the pride of Tallahassee, Jacqueline Sanchez. Madam Chair, now our pledge to be followed by our national anthem. One nation, indivisible, under God, with liberty and justice for all. We now ask that you join in singing as the Pride of Tallahassee plays our national anthem. The National Anthem, performed by our Pride of Tallahassee. As we're closing in on kickoff time, we'll run through the projected starters. And these are tentative with uh, definitely some uh, issues with injuries. Not sure exactly how they'll go tonight. And that depends kind of up to the minute when the team takes the field. But at quarterback, Mason Battles in the backfield. Christian McCary expected to return tonight to be joined by either Jaden McKenzie or Joseph Hooks or both. And depending on their status, they were both banged up from last week. Receivers, Brody Ellis, Chase Chumley, and Walker Wells. And the offensive line, Joel Holcomb at center. The guards are Jaquan Griffin and Braden Arnold. And the tackles, Ben Carwile and John Jeffrey. Defensive line for the Tigers, A.J. Henry, Brandon Barrow, and Eli Whittington. In the linebacking core, it's Christian McCary, Joseph Hooks, Caleb Segrist, and Carter Sayers. And the defensive backfield, Jade McKenzie, Rush Wright, Cortland Roberts. Uh, Mason Battles, the punter, and Alec Carswell is the kicker for Tallahassee. Awaiting the captains to come out for the coin toss, which is coming up in a moment. Borgard in the road white with the royal blue and gold trim. Tallahassee will be in home purple tonight with the gold numerals and white trim as they're forming the spirit line right now. Pretty good crowd here. Uh, the lower section looks packed in. You would think a lot of the folks coming to see the band, too, so that probably helps some. And still some seats available in the upper deck if you're coming and joining us for the game tonight here at O'Brien Stadium. Looks like a good night for football, Michael. You know, we've really been blessed other than that first ball game uh, as far as heat is concerned. Because normally in this press box, even into the third week, it's brutally hot. Oh, yeah. And tonight it's really not that bad. The sun's already gone down, and um, the, you can tell the temps are kind of dropping a little bit. Still got some humidity in there. You can feel it. But at least we're not dealing with 110 in index heat, you know. So I'll take it. Thank God, yeah. The uh, temperature is 76 right now. It's uh, dropped off some. Uh, since we came on the air a few degrees, as you mentioned.
captains have arrived for Beauregard, and they are Keon Simpson, Cam Morgan, and Corday Stinson. And Tallahassee's captains are coming on to the field now. Looks like Jake Chuan Griffin, Ben Carwile, Braden Arnold, and Brody Ellis. As they make their way out to uh, the 50-yard line. One thing about this Borgard roster, it is, it's a big 5A roster. It it's is a big indeed. roster for any size school, yes. really, unless you're a big 7A, because they've got 85 players that are listed and that's 33 more than Tallahassee has on its own roster. So they can tell you the disparity in at least size. Now, of course, only 11 can play at a time. We know that. But they have a lot of numbers. But still, when you've got basically uh, three more starting 11s, more than you do, if you think about it, you got a whole other defense, a whole other offense, and then you can split the other 11 up between offense and defense. So that's a lot of players to choose from compared to um, a lesser number like we have. But like you said, 11 can only play on each side. But what that does give them the ability to do is rotate a lot more kids. Yeah, if there are players that, uh, you know, have uh, the skill to do it. I mean, you know, the depth is there numbers-wise. Is it there with the skill level to, to spare them? Usually it is when you got that much of a difference. Uh, one thing to consider is – this is year two of the recycling of uh, the uh, different alignments of the regions and obviously the classifications. Realignment will be coming around after the two-year cycle is done here. And who knows where Tattlesey will be. Uh, there's some numbers out there that are floating around, whether they'll drop us down to 4A. we always have been a small 5A or a large 4A since they went to the six and seven classifications. Borgard's uh, looking like they're probably going to stay 5A. At yeah, least. yeah, yeah. We, I think we are the smallest 5A school by, like, three to five students. It's, it's very few. And, you know, like you're talking about, based off the numbers that we have right now, if you go off of last year, we're definitely a 4A school coming up for the next two-year cycle. But what's happened to the rest of the schools? Yeah, no, yeah, it depends on what they have done as well. Have they, have they grown? Usually everybody grows a little yeah. if you look at a consensus in general speaking terms, but uh, that will uh, remain to be seen. We'll find that out in a few months. we got still a season to go here in a full school year for uh, all the sports. We'll go down to the field. Brad Davis is there with a the white hat as he gets ready for the coin toss. 54. Captain for today, Tyler's your home team. Where are you the visiting team? Purples talk to purple, white talk to white, all right? All right, this is my coin. This is head, this is tail. Call it loud enough so I can hear, I'm on the pocket here. All right, we're going yeah. It's heads, you win the talk. Tallahassee is one, they're gonna receive. Thank you, Brad. This has been the CBNS Bank Countdown to Kickoff. Tallahassee and Borgard coming up next here on WTLS, Score 94 and Hit 106. Score 94, Hit 106. If biscuits look the same in the end, does it matter where they came from? Does it matter if they're made 18 days ago? or 18 minutes? Does it make a difference if they're made by a machine in a factory or made by hand by a single person? Hardy's made from scratch biscuits with caramel, icing, and crumb topping because there's nothing fresh about frozen biscuits. Neptune. My name's Ryan Nichols. I work in the foundry. I've been at Neptune for three years, and one of the best things about working here is everybody is working on the same goal to win their day.
Well, Tattlesey will be getting the football. They had a good opening drive last week against Play Central that stalled at the 20. They missed a field goal. They're looking for their first points in the first half as they start game four tonight against Borgard. We're going to get them tonight. Let's hope so. I, I, I got a feeling. I'm going wise. I'm going wise. There's my microphone back. You're, you're coming I'm, in. Am yeah. I? Okay. You know, this better for you? Can yeah, you, you know, yes, this morning it was fading in and out. So uh, We're not listening, uh, hearing that. Uh, I, I think you might be getting that through your headphones. Okay, but uh, gotcha. as far as I can hear it, you're loud and clear. Uh, loud and clear. I'm, I'm with Oz. We're we going to get them tonight. Let's come out here and let's drive this ball down the field. And let's go ahead and get us some points in this first, ball, first drive of the ball game. It'll be teed up on the 40 by the Hornets. As Josh Lugo... We'll put it down and tee it up to kick it off. That's the same dude that kicked last year. You remember? I, rem I remember that name. Well, good for you. you got a good memory. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's him. And he's got a pretty good leg, if I'm remembering cor correctly. For Tallahassee, Cortland six, Roberts goes zero. back deep with Tramel McCoy. And uh, Cortland made a couple of nice returns against Play Central last week. Let's see if we can start with some good field position. T, uh, ball fell off the tee here. As we mentioned, Justin Johns, the head coach over at Borgard, Mike Battles here in Tennessee, meeting for the second time. Borgard won the game last year. Here's Roberts on the return. Nice, nice job of getting out across the 25, the 30, and up to the 34 Never yard line. Had to Portland come up, pick it up off his shoestrings, but he made a nice return, and Tannels will have a pretty good spot to start on first down. Yeah, that was a good field position by, Cor I mean, field vision by Cortland right there to see that seam and to pick up that extra five yards. He did good just to control the ball. Yes. Trent Morris is going to start at quarterback, the freshman. Getting his first start in shotgun. He will hand it off to Hooks, who got around the end. Got a good block out there. He's got some room across the 40 midfield. 40-yard line to the 35, the 30, the 25, the 20. Stepped out at the 15-yard line. And the crowd is pumped, as is the Tiger team. Good carry by Joseph Hooks. Proud of that young man. That was, that was a good carry. Uh, one of the things... Actually, Oz and I were talking about that a while ago. Um, with Trent at the quarterback, maybe we can run some misdirections off of a play like that, fake it coming this way and hit him back the other way. Good block by Rush yes. Wright on the outside that sprung him loose. Beautiful block. Yes, good blocking. Ellis, Chumley, and That's Battles wide to the right side. Uh, we got moving a little bit quick, couldn't get the snap off. We're going to get a five-yard penalty here. Got a little antsy because Borgard's defensive line jumped, but they didn't get into the side the neutral zone. And then uh, Caleb Segris uh, called out a uh, a shift or something for the offensive line, and I think I think they just got a little bit jumpy there. First and 15, ball at the Tallahassee uh, 20 to 20 yard line of Borgard. Got C.D. McCary in there right now. At the running back, good to see him in. That was a 41-yard run on the first play. Good hard run. I hear you, By Christian. the Tigers' hooks after the penalty. Christian good McCary good breaks a tackle in the backfield, and he's got it down to the 10, keeping his feet moving. Good to see him back in the lineup tonight off the injury that has sidelined him for the last two weeks. And that was a gain of about 10 yards. It was. Which will, yeah. uh, since they had the penalty, set him up with second and five from the 10-yard line. We got our five back plus five more. Now, this is, you know, second what they call manageable. So, let's see what we do right here. He did a great job of keeping his feet because he stumbled right, right off balance. The, coming out of there. No doubt about it. McCary's back there with Morris, who will hand it to him. He's in the backfield, had to break away for the first man, and he's hit behind the line back to 12. All he could do to get back to the 12-yard line, a loss of two, and here's third down. Yeah, that, that closed up extremely fast. Uh, Borgard read that well. 
I think what you talked about, maybe a misdirection there might have worked because yeah, they were really so. keying on McCary going right. He comes off the field. Hooks will go back there in what might be a passing situation for the Tigers in a third and seven. Hooks goes in motion. It's going to be a running play. Oh, Morris is going to take it in for the first score of the first half of the season for the Tigers. Touchdown, Trent Morris. Officially a 13-yard run, and Tallahassee is on the scoreboard, their first lead of the season. That's a load of trickeration in our of Bush, President. But he faked the handoff to Joseph, the same one that we ran the very first play of the ball game. And instead of Trent handing it off, he kept it and had a huge seam in the middle. Good play, good read. Carswell attempting the extra point. Morris will hold. Good snap and hold. The kicks up, and it's right through the uprights. Tallahassee 7 and Beauregard nothing. 9.32 to go. First quarter play. Tallahassee Tigers football on WTLS. Score 94 and hit 106. <laughs> I like it. Uh, yeah, I mean, that was a good read. He, you know, he didn't hand it off. And that's right. Caught him over for two. And he's so quick. I mean, that's, yeah. Well, that goes back to putting the same play in there that Ellis run last year. Our friendly staff will be happy to help you with any of your financial needs. We have a wide variety of products such as checking and savings, money market, and CDs. If you're wanting to buy a boat or automobile, we're thinking of refinancing your First Community Bank has been serving the Tallahassee community for over seven years. We are your locally owned hometown community bank. Please call us at 283-2299 or visit us on the web at fcbca.com. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. And follow WTLS and Tallahassee Times on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Carswell will kick off here. It's a 7 0 Tennessee lead. Opening drive and a touchdown drive for the Tigers. 9.32 to go in this opening quarter. A squib kick that is fumbled, and down will go the return man. Holloway went backwards. They'll mark him down at the 18 of Beauregard. So Tallahassee off to a hot start on offense, and the special teams follow suit. Yeah, that was good play by the um, special teams right there. I saw um, Mason Henderson in on that tackle. Um, let's see who else. I saw Chumley, it looks like, was in on that ta tackle. Uh, maybe one or two more. I couldn't quite get them all, but um, definitely those two were in on that tackle. Good to see that. Good pursuit. First play for offense for Beauregard. Trip set on the right side. They're going to throw out there, and the catch is made, and broken tackle, but going backwards, and going to be tackled behind the line as the Tigers here to swarm on the receiver that time was Coleman on the catch from its quarterback. Cub Jones is the quarterback for Beauregard. I'm going to tell you who initiated that play on our side. That was Joseph Hooks. He got just enough of his jersey to spin him and allow the rest of our defense to get to him. Second down and 11. Bringing him in motion this time. Holman comes across. Going to lead three on the left side. Might have gotten turned up too quick. They yeah, did throw did. the flag. That is going to be a penalty on Borgard. Blowing the whistle there, guys. Yeah, I don't think they could hear it for the band over here. You know, you've got a ninth grader getting the start tonight for Tallahassee at quarterback, and that's the same story for Beauregard. They've got a freshman, Cub Jones, 5'10", 161 pounder. Of course, a nice opening drive for Trent Morris, who is a 5'8", 149 pounder. It's five-yard penalty is going to back him up. Should put it at about the 12 yard line and make it second down and about 17 to go. I couldn't have asked for a better start. Let's see if Tattlesey can make him punt it from deep back here. Got a couple of plays to get a first down, though. Second down coming up here. Jones. Passes out of the backfield. It's Holman again. He breaks the tackle. He's across the That's 15, the 20. Penalty flags wow. everywhere as he goes out of bounds at the 30. 
And we'll see about that. Michael, if, it, if I, my eyes didn't deceive me, that's going to be a hole on board guard on their wide receiver. Yeah, that's the call. <laughs> and yep, that's what we got. Now we got a late flag right here. What's funny about it is that receiver went over and actually tried, had to help our Tulsi guy put his jersey back on his shoulder pad. They back it up half the distance to the eight and replay second down. Now second down and about 19. Play Central scored really quick. It's 6-0. They lead Elmore County in Eclectic tonight, first quarter. Quick swing out of the backfield. Holman again. Got holding out here again. Are they going to call it? Yes, they are. And he's going to get it up to the 15, maybe the 20. But this one will be coming back. They were grabbing on the jersey. It was obvious hold. That's back-to-back -back holding calls against Beauregard. Yeah, they're going to be inside the five now. Obviously, an emphasis on throwing to Holman. They've thrown it to him every single time. Right. Javon Holman, who we're talking about, the big wide receiver. This should back them up inside their five. We've got the wrong direction. A few native Hornets down here saying, let the kids play. Yeah, we want them to play, but we don't want them to hold the whole time. Well, watch out for number 18. Did they ever back it up? They didn't. They never moved the ball. Uh -uh. That's the same spot. What's going on here? Two yards is where the spot of the foul was, but it only went back five yards, it looked like. Uh, Tannis is calling a timeout. I think maybe Coach Battles wants to learn a little more about that. I can't blame him. We'll take a break as well. 8.07 to go in this first quarter. Tannis 7, Beauregard nothing. Yeah, I thought they should have Should have backed it up at least a couple of yards. I thought it would have went at least inside the five. It, it should have. They didn't move the ball at all. Did they move it a yard? Did they move it any yards? You got to move They it. moved it two yards because it was second and 20, and then they moved it back two yards. I don't know where the spot of, where they actually called the spot of the foul. Uh, should be half the distance. Yards. Should be half I mean, the distance either way. Call, that's yeah, a, I don't that's know. I'm confused. Hi, I'm Kari Sid, owner of Grove Station. We want to invite you to come in and join us for lunch, dinner, or brunch. We're open Tuesday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And we run dinner on Thursday and Friday nights from 5 p.m. to 8. Brunch is Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We do private and hosted dining experiences in our loft. We're located in downtown Tallahassee. We're on Facebook and Instagram. See you in a minute. River Region Sports. I have a feeling we'll hear something this afternoon. Noon to two weekdays on Score 94 and Hit 106. Running play. Hand off to Grady, who will get some positive yardage in there. There's no penalty flag on this one. He got about to 11. It'll be third down. And Beauregard will need about 16 yards to get a first down. Yeah, Cortland Roberts and Caleb Seegers on that stop. Caden Peters was in on that too. Um, good hard uh, tackling right there by our defense. Need to keep it up. Shotgun, pistol set. For the quarterback, Jones. He's got Grady back there with him. Watch out for number 18, Holman. They've thrown to him every time. He's lined up on the near side as they will hand it off. And good defensive play. The Tigers will stop him, and they'll have to punt it. Nice. And it was Caleb Seegers who met the running back, Grady, which brings up fourth down at about 13 from Borgard's own 15. And here comes the punting team onto the field. Yeah, Caleb Seegers met him in the hole. Good hard tackle by Caleb. Good to see that tonight. Um, he's on his game. And, and, and hey, look, we got to have that leadership on defense. He's a senior, and we gotta, we got to have him leading the way tonight. We have nobody back to return. We're just going to let it go. And here comes a punt with some pressure. Nobody there, so it's going to be a good punt. It's going to roll. Goodness gracious. Jackson Gaither just hit a lifetime punt all the way down to the Tallahassee 27 yard line. Well, let's just drive it that far again. About 53. I got 58. I don't know what you got on that one. That's what I did quick in my head. 58-yard uh, yeah. punt, no return. 
Yeah, that'd be right. Well, it flipped the field, but Tennessee has the ball back. Yep, 58 yards. With a 7-0 lead, 6.32 to go in this first quarter of play. Look, got to find a positive where we can. We scored first. We held a team to a punt on the first drive. Absolutely, baby. I'll take it. Whistles blow at the line. There's a penalty flag There's again. Flag on the play. I'm gonna say Procedure when, against Tallahassee. Yeah, Had a couple of these uh, already. That'll make it first and 15. Back them up to the 22. I don't see where that one came in at. It was not quite as obvious as the first one, I don't guess. Pike Road and Lanier tied 7-7 first quarter. That's one of them games we talked about this morning, which Lanier team's going to show up. The really good one or the really bad one. Morrison shotgun, four receivers, two to each side. He's going to throw it to Ellis. Ball batted off his fingers, incomplete. Well, he gets it out of there quick. He's got some zip on it. He really has a good arm. He does for ninth grade, and he's not a big dude, okay? I'm not tall by no stretch of the imagination, maybe 5'9 at best, and he's just an inch or so shorter than I am, but he can, he's got a cannon for an arm. Second down and 15 from Tamilsey's own 22-yard line. Mason Henderson in the backfield this time. It will be a run by Mars. Room to run across the 30. He's to the 40-yard line. He will go out of bounds across midfield at the 49. A first down run by Trent Morris. Good opening by that offensive line like on a misdirection run. They, the offensive line is creating some holes tonight for Trent and for the running backs, and that's good to see right there. And I'm going to applaud Trent right here over here on the corner. A lot of people are like, why did you run out of bounds? Well, there was about ten of them and one of him, and he made the right decision. He was so fast getting downfield, he had no blocking. Yes. <laughs> he outran his blocking bad. First down, Tigers. Now on the Borgard side. And it will be McCary this time. He puts his head down. He'll... Drive forward. Boy, he runs hard. He got to the 45-yard line, a gain of about three yards, and it will bring up second and seven. Timeout assist by officials. This is the heat break timeout. 5.59 to go. First quarter, Tannelsey seven. Four guard nothing. Stay current. Gain financial freedom with the most sophisticated digital products. Check balances, pay bills, transfer funds, and deposit checks from anywhere. Make purchases on your mobile device using your CBNS Bank debit card with Mobile Wallet at participating stores and restaurants. Learn more at cbsbank.com. CBNS Bank, member of DIC Equal Housing Lender. Charges and fees may apply from your cellular service provider. Contact your service provider for information. Hi, friends. Eric Cresswell here at Tallahassee Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram. I'm proud to announce our Ram Power Day sales event now through October 31st. The best way to find out which Ram is right for you is to stop by and take a test drive. We also have a great selection of new 2023 Dodge Challengers and new 2023 Dodge Chargers in stock at Dallas Power. We are dedicated to the Ram. Check out our complete inventory at DallasAutomotive.com. DallasAutomotive. Drop a little. Save a lot. Score 94. Second down, seven, pass to right, caught to the 40, right to the 39, close to the sticks. It's third down, it looks like, and about a yard to go. Rush right on a quick pass from Trent Morris, complete. And the gain of about six. Third down play coming up here for the Tigers. Yeah, good hard run um, after the catch by Rush, but, you know, number one, make sure you secure the football, and he did, and so... Morris is out for Hooks, who will take it himself inside the 35 to the 30. 25, cut back in the 20, 15, 10, into the end zone. Joseph Hooks makes it 13-0, Tigers. Touchdown, Joseph Hooks. Um, glad to see that because on the first play, he got all the way down to what, like the 15. I think he ran it for a long ways. So there you go. Uh, good job, Joseph Hooks. First touchdown on the year for him. So, congratulations. 
I like the little Eric Metcalf move down there where he sidestepped the guy. Liked it. Number 24. Yes, 39 yards. Sorry about that. 39 yarder for Joseph Hooks. Tallahassee with a couple of scores coming to life tonight with the offense. Remember, they had only scored 21 points in three games total. And most of that late on the backups. Looks a lot different tonight. Here is Carswell's point after try. Five it's up and through, and it's 14 0 Tigers. 5.03 to go in this first quarter of play. Tattlesey Tigers football on WTLS, Tattlesey Times TV, and Spectrum. This is Tom Crane with Tallahassee Rehab. This marks our 25th year in the Tallahassee community, and this football season will be year 20 on the sidelines for our own Sterling Turner. At Tallahassee Rehab, we're grateful for the relationships we've had over the past two-plus decades. Let our certified staff give you a hand with your injury. Tallahassee Rehab, 1000 Friendship Road. Hey, this is Jeremy Tone with Tallahassee True Value. Come by and see me, Dale Taylor, or Brad Roberts for all your building material needs. And if you need a paint color match, we can do it with our state-of-the-art matching system. Tallahassee True Value, we're local folks you've trusted since 1993. For all your hardware, lumber, paint, plumbing supplies, plumbing fixtures, windows, doors, nuts and bolts, we've got it. And if we don't, we can get it for you. Tallahassee True Value, 1400 Gilmer Avenue. Score 94 and hit 106. And Chucks. Holloway on the return will bring it out to the 31 yard line of Borgard. The Hornets take over there. 4.56 left in this first quarter. Townsley 14 and the Hornets nothing. Good stop by A.J. Henry, just a sophomore on the team. And um, good to see him getting some action on special teams. And he's actually been playing a lot on defense tonight, too. So um, good to see that young man. He's, he's extremely talented. Time called by somebody. Got to get the chain straight. They got okay. a kink in them, I guess. So the chain gang takes care of that. Good tug by Jonathan Floyd. Jones hands off. Some room to run up the middle. There's first down yardage for Grady, who got it out to the 43 yard line. Yeah, that's, you know, positive yards for Beauregard right there. But a um, uh, good hard tackle by Chase Chumley, number three. Um, good open field tackle because if he don't make that tackle right there, he's gone to the house. First, first down for the Hornets. I'm looking for him to try to stretch the field with that big receiver they got. Yeah, at some point in time, I do too. They're going to hand off. Same thing. Big, huge hole right side. Broken tackle across the 50. They will get it to the 46 of Tallis. They're trying to strip the ball out of there. And uh, that looks like that's enough for another first down. This time, it was Doolittle on the carry. And it is going to move the chains again. Back-to-back 10-yard -back runs for first downs for Borgard. Basically, it's just a delayed handoff. They're waiting for the hole to open up before they hand the ball off. We're going to have to adjust that. We're, basically what we're doing is we're over pursuing it. Yep, Big bang's going to get there it. Not this time, says Caleb Segrist in the backfield to knock down. Doolittle on the carry. And it is a loss back to the 49-yard line of three yards. Second down and 13 coming up. That's what you need a um, senior to do right there, what Caleb Segrist did. He, did. he saw the play, the exact same play about to happen. And he's like, uh-uh, not again, not on my watch. Good job by Caleb Seegers seeing that play develop and stopping him in the backfield. Second down, Ocean Man Holman. Going to pass to the left side, nearly oh. intercepted. Great read on that play by McCary. Came over and knocked it down, intended for Stinson, and it brings up third down. He read that. He's seen it a couple of times already. He says, not this time. Yeah, CD read that uh, play perfect, and he that was almost a pick six right there. He was within an eyelash of picking that one off and going to the house with it. Good read, good read by the defense. Now they're in third long again. See if Tannelsey can get off the field here on third down from the 49 of the Tigers. They need 13. 
Doolittle in the backfield, a gun for Jones. He's got three receivers to his left side. They'll need to hurry to snap this, so they're going to get a lay. Got it off with one second on the play clock. Here's a pass down the field, going deep. And it is going to be incomplete. Good coverage by Wright back there. We'll bring up fourth down. Are we going to go four down territory right here with Tallahassee having a two touchdown lead? Or are they going to punt it? Yeah, I know I'd go. punt it, but yeah. that's what uh, Coach Jones decides to do for Morgard. He brings his punting team on. At least that's what they're going to do is line up to punt it. The, the quarterback was begging him to let's run another play. Yeah. Yeah. Gaither coming on. Got I just want to catch the ball now and not let it roll so far. Well, we didn't have anybody back last time. We are uh, looking Same like thing. we're playing uh, punt safe here again. Uh, we're not going to even go back. We're so. going for a block, punt block. This one... Uh, it's hit out of bounds. He's got a leg on it, but he hit it way out of bounds. It should come way back because that ball went out of bounds up past the 20, I thought. And this guy uh, didn't do a very good job of marking it. Uh, well, this first guy right here marked it where it should have been at the 30. He marked it at 16. But then he's, that, telling him, he's telling him how far to come, and they stopped for whatever reason at 16. That ball was 10 yards out of bounds at the 16 yard. That's right. Yep. <laughs> you got to kind of yeah. get an angle on it. Anyway, it backs Tattlesey up for their third possession of the night, two for two with two touchdowns. By the way, what's this team in the purple and gold? We haven't seen this team this year. What I in like the world it. has happened? They what have really come together tonight. Whatever it is, let's keep doing it. Playing inspired, looking good so far. Henderson in motion, it will be Morris running right. He's going to run all the way. He's running into a pile of Hornets, and they stuffed him at the 14. He lost a yard, maybe two. Winding down this first quarter, it's 2.30 to go. 14 nothing. Tallahassee leading it. Second down and 12 coming up. Pike road over Lanier, 14-7 right now. Play Central up 14-0 on Elmore County. Morris pumps, looks to throw now, flushed out of the pocket. Going to have to just throw it away. Smart and he play. does, incomplete, third down. That, that almost looked like it was supposed to be a pump and go. You see him kind of fake it right there, right off the bat. Yeah, and just it, never saw the receiver go on up the right. field, though. I don't know if there was a miscommunication. It looked almost like the play that they ran to rush over here on this side, yeah. but he, he might have been tied up right think, off the line. I think it just wasn't there. Yeah, a good decision not to try to throw it into double coverage over there is what it looked like they had two guys right there. Here's third down for the Tigers, deep in their own territory from their 14. They need 12. Trip set to the left side. One receiver to the right. Timeout is called by Tattlesey. Fuel two left. We'll take a break as well. Tattlesey Tigers football. Tigers up 14 nothing. That was a good timeout. At 563 Jordan Avenue in Tallahassee, Alabama. Moon started back in Talladega, Alabama in the 50s when my granddad ran it at HG Moon. And now we're bringing it to Tallahassee to keep the Moon's tradition going. We like to bring great barbecue. We serve everything from pulled pork, ribs, brisket, chicken. Mac and cheese, baked bean, potato salad, coleslaw. We do a dessert of the week. We're also actively hiring. Please come see us at 563 Jordan Avenue, Tuesday through Saturday from 11 to 7. This is Brad Parker with Parker Tire and Service Center. And this is Jamie Bush. We sell BF Goodrich, Michelin, Toyo, just about any tire you need. And we do services on your cars like oil changes, air conditioning, water pumps, just about any maintenance that your car needs. We just want to thank our many customers for allowing us to serve the Tallahassee area for the last 30 years and look forward to the next 30 here at Parker Tire and Service Center, 1508 Gilmer Avenue in Tallahassee. Check us out on the web at parkertire.com and follow us on Facebook. Score 94 and hit 106. Yep. <laughs> he had his hand on his back. <laughs> After the timeout, a couple of penalty flags are thrown on a pass play intended for Brody Ellis from Trent Morris. And it could be pass interference. If so, it'll give Tattlesey a first down. Pass interference. That's what we assume. They threw it right there. Pass yeah. interference is Brad. We'll wait for the official call from the referee. Oh, the defender had a jersey full holding his back. Huge penalty on third down and long, and it is going to be enough for a first down with a penalty being assessed. 
bringing it out to the 29-yard line. The Hornet faithful disagrees. Yeah, a couple of huge penalties already in this game. Borgard started tonight behind the eight ball with penalties on their opening possession. And there's a third down and long first down on a penalty play. So the Tigers now with some breathing room up 14, nothing a minute 52 to go in this first quarter. Morris hooks left side handoff. Looking for the block, Cut. cuts back at the right time. He's up to the 35-yard line. He was bringing that play out a little bit. There's nothing outside, so he cut it up and ends up picking up about six yards, second down and four coming up. Joseph did a really good job of, of reading his keys on that because, like you said, he was trying to bounce it to the outside like he has the previous two, but it just was not there. And he saw a little crease, and he ducked his head and, and picked up, like you said, five or six right there on first down. Uh, we'll take that gain every time. Second down play for the Tigers, their own 35. Four yards to go. High snap. Morris looking to pass. Man fell down. He was looking for. He's going to have to run himself. He cuts back. He's got a first down across the 40. 45. And goes down at the 46. Trent Morris made something out of nothing there. He was looking for Adeo coming out of the backfield, I think. He was. And Adeo was uh, tripped up. So Morris improvised. Nola's going to go to the side side over there, and he's going to kick his own self because he, he was looking for Nolan, and he slipped down. I, I know Nolan, so I can see Nolan right now shaking his head and his helmet slaying. Darn, ball's coming to me, and I fell. Maybe we'll come back to it. He made, he made something out of nothing, though, on that. that he was, did. That was really good. He did. That, that, was, that was a good job. Trent Morris has taken every snap except one Wildcat at quarterback tonight. He will hand it off to McCary. Nice cutback move by McCary. Across the 50, the ball pops out. It's going towards the out of bounds, and it will get there. Thank goodness for Tallahassee. As a helmet hit the ball, it rolls out at midfield and ends up being a gain of about six for Tallahassee. Fortunately, not a turnover. Yeah, good hard run by Christian McCary. But on that one, um, you know, he was trying to pick up that extra yard and got a little squirrely with the ball. And like I said, the helmet hit it just in the right spot. Knocked it out of bounds, but um, – Bounced our way that time. Time has expired in this first quarter. It's been a good one. Tallahassee leads 14 0. Tallahassee Tigers football on WTLS. Score 94 and hit 106. Sunbelt Lawn Works, we use professional equipment and we'll treat your lawn as if it were our lawn. Sunbelt Lawn Works, where the sun is always shining. Hornsby and Son Body Shop. My dad picked it up as a hobby when he was still in the Navy. Once he got out, I followed along with him. We have a great staff. Technology is evolving practically every day. 15, 20 years ago, you know, you would see a concurrence of a same year model car running five, six, seven years. Now they basically change every year. You have to keep up with that technology and kind of move forward. Hornsby and Son Body Shop, 101B Caldwell Street in East Tallahassee. Score 94 and hit 106. Morris wants to throw. He's going deep as we start the second quarter for Battles. He had a hand on it, incomplete. The ball was there, but pretty good coverage. But there was a chance there for Mason Battles to make that catch. Incomplete, and now it's third down for the Tigers. So you can see the arm that Morris has. He heaved that one a long way. Yeah, that was a, a good 30, 35 yards in the air pass. For, uh, but you know what that does? They, they did connect on it. But it's, it gets your linebackers and your safeties out of the box and keeps them from cheating down, playing run, run, run all the time. Now they've got to respect the throw because, you know, we've thrown a couple downfield, and so you got to respect that. Converted to third down and long a moment ago on penalty, and now Morris will try to run for it. He cuts it up, and he will not have a chance. He got back to the line of scrimmage no more. Fourth and six, and you would think Tallahassee will probably punt here at the 49 of Borgard, and no hesitation. Here comes the punting team onto the field. 
continue to play this field position game up 14-0 as we're just underway in the second quarter. Real Town leads 7-0 over Goshen after one. Clay Central 14-0 lead over Elmore County after a period of play. Battles into punt. This might be a trick. Of course, he's a quarterback, too, and he comes up close. Fakes to Chumley. Now he's going to try to throw across the field and does, and it is incomplete. The ball was there, but Borgard not fooled. They got over to defend Cortland Roberts. The ball hit him in the hands, but so did a defender right as the ball got there. So Tavlesey tries a little trickery, and it does not work. So the Hornets have good field position at their own 49 with 11 one to go in this second quarter. You know, some people, some people might have an issue with that call, but I don't. Uh, I like the aggressiveness. You know, we kind of got our foot on the pedal, and I'd rather keep it on the pedal and, and make them try to play catch up. Now we got to get the defense to force a turnover or put pressure on this offense here. Jones hands off up the middle. Doolittle broke a tackle, keeps his feet moving to the 44 of Tannelsey, a nice gain of seven on first down. Yeah, I think that's another tackle by, uh, no, I don't know if that's Caleb or not, but Vincent Diego, number 51, a freshman playing nose tackle, was the first guy to hit him. Jones might have gotten us to jump. He did. That'll give him a first down. No, they didn't call that while ago on board. Did they do it? Yeah, they jumped down here yeah. earlier. Mm. That's all right. To the 39-yard line, first down, Hornets after the five-yard penalty. Jones in the shotgun. Hand off. Doolittle again got some room. Inside the 30 to the 28, another first down for guard. McCary and Chumley there to make the tackle. I think we had the right read on the blitz that we blitz. Uh, Caden Peters was in on the blitz, but right at the last second, one of their linemen kind of pulled and blocked him out of the play. Borgard quickly up to snap it. Shotgun formation. They'll look at the defense, get the call from the sideline. They'll say, keep what you got. Is Jones with three receivers to his right. Will look there, and then he'll have to take off and run with it, and he will be taken down at the 22-yard line. McKenzie made the tackle. A pretty good coverage there by the Tigers. They've seen that play more than a few times already tonight. A five-yard gain, though, by Jones. Yeah, that was a straight-up blitz by Rush uh, Wright on that play, number seven for the Tallahassee Tigers. Or it might have actually been Joseph, now that I'm looking at the formation again. Here is a running play. Doolittle makes a nice stutter step. He gets inside the 20. He's down to the 16 of the Tigers and has another Borgard first down. Under 10 to go in this first half of play. 14-0, Tallahassee on top. Pike Road leading Lanier after a quarter. It's 14-13. <laughs> Ball at the 16 of Tannelsey. We need a turnover right here. Doolittle's been getting most of it here, and they'll give it to him again. And their line is really clearing us out. And that time, he stopped at the 12, a gain of four, second down and six. Yeah, they're getting a pretty good push up front, four guard is. Now, their, their offensive line outweighs our defensive line at least 25 pounds. They're big. Yeah, there's per, no doubt. For a kid, easily. New back in there, and Grady, we saw him earlier in the game. They got a twin set to the right side, and the gun for the quarterback, Cub Jones. Second and six. Looking to throw. He's got time. He will, and has it complete to Holman, who gets by the first man, breaks the tackle, and takes it into the end zone. And the Hornets have scored. And it is a 12-yard touchdown pass from Jones to Holman. And it's a 14-6 game with 8.02 to go in this first half.
Extra point attempt coming up. This is Lugo. Good snap and hold. The kick's up. And it is good. 14-7. 8.02 left in the first half. Tallahassee Tigers football on WTLS. Score 94 and hit 106. Community Hospital is one of the leading specialty departments in our area. The GI Lab specializes in performing diagnostic and therapeutic procedures such as colonoscopy, which is the gold standard for colon cancer detection. Colon cancer is the second leading cause of death in the United States. More than 50,000 people lose their life to this disease each year. Colon cancer does not discriminate and it affects all racial and ethnic backgrounds. Colon cancer can occur at any age, but those 50 years or older have an increased risk for developing colon cancer. At Community Hospital, the GI Lab's main goals are to increase awareness of colon cancer, encourage participation in the colon screening process, and perform these screenings with a caring and professional attitude. Schedule an appointment today with Dr. Tom Bianchi, our gastroenterologist, at 283-3862. The GI Lab at Community Hospital is here to provide our community with quality, compassionate health care. Score 94 and hit 106. Geek for the Tigers, number 26. And number 11, Lugo will be kicking off with Borgard getting on the scoreboard. A 14 7 Tallahassee lead, 8.02 left in the second quarter. Roberts and McCoy deep for Tallahassee. It'll be an opportunity for McCoy this time, who's got it at the 15 yard line, 20. He's hit at the 25, and down he'll go. Tallahassee will take it first and 10. They're on 25. They have a 14 to 7 lead. Mind you, at halftime, the alumni performance. Pride of Tallahassee and our Parker Tire and Service Center halftime report. We also have our Student Athlete of the Week, sponsored by District Attorney Mike Segrist. I know we're the Pride of Tallahassee now, but we're going to have some long blue line in there tonight. Yeah, going back over the years for sure. Yes. Seven fifty-two mark of this second quarter as we start this drive. We're two for three tonight on drives with touchdowns. Morris rolling to his left, looking to throw. Not much there. He's going to have to take off, and he'll be taken down back at the eighteen. Had some guys trying to get open, but didn't look like anybody was, and it'll be a sack, a loss of about six. Second down at sixteen. Yeah, Trent, Trent needs to learn from that and just learn to get rid of that ball. Throw it up the sideline, you know, out of bounds. He was outside the pocket, so, um, but he'll learn from that. Because, I mean, he made something happen out of it before, so. Borgard does have to respect his ability with his arm and his legs. They have a four man front. They're going to hand off McCary, tried to get outside. He had no chance. Well, they pursued quickly. And they got there, and he is going to be stopped for no gain. Third down. Number four on the carry on the carry for the Tigers. 21 yeah. nothing now the That's score. Clay the Central leading Elmore County is there in the second quarter. Can we see do a quarterback draw here? A little unexpected. Back maybe by the 10, Isaiah Paul. Third and about 17 yards to go from Tallahassee's own 18. Morris with McCary to his left. High snap. He's going to go left, look to throw, try to get around the first guy, then lets it fly. Intended for Chumley. Incomplete. And the punting team will come back out. So back to back. Stops by Beauregard. One on the fourth down play last time when we went for it. Don't, don't expect any kind of trick play on this one. Back deep in our own territory with fourth and long. And an opportunity for the Hornets down a score with 6.20 remaining in this first half. Yeah, I don't expect any trickeration here. Here's Battles. Nice Pretty Holloway. good looking punt. Holloway's gonna go back and let it bounce and it gets a good Tallahassee bounce inside the 40. And the uh, four guard coaches are over here screaming as he let that roll another 13 yards. It'll be down at the 37. And you gotta catch that ball. And Holloway let it go, and that gave us a little extra. Great punt. 
by Mason Battles. 44 yards. Well, they had enough hang time on it to allow the punt um, team to get down and to cover that punt. So I know they're screaming at him, but. Heat break timeout, 6.05 to go. Second quarter, Tallahassee Tigers football. Tigers up 14 7. Insurance claims welcome. And City Collision offers truck accessories. Located on the Tallahassee Highway, just past the Y, City Collision. This is Clint McBrim from First Methodist in Tallahassee. I'd like to invite you to join us for worship on Sundays with a contemporary worship at 8.50 a.m. in our fellowship hall or a traditional worship at 11 a.m. in our sanctuary. You can also join us by watching our live stream at fumctallacy.com. We would love to have you come and worship the Lord with us on Sunday mornings at 8.50 or 11 a.m. Good enough for a point first time. Keep up with the latest. And follow WTLS and Tallahassee Times on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Doolittle with a chunk play, uh, another first down run, and they'll go back to him after the heat break timeout. He'll move it into Tallahassee territory to the 49 of the Tigers, and it'll be second down and six. You know, they're getting some positive plays now as Borgard, but we haven't seen these breakaways like we've seen early in the season. Tallahassee has definitely played better against that, allowing just seven here. Through uh, the first quarter and a half, 5.15 to go until halftime. 14-7 Tigers lead. Second down play, Jones. Do little again. Good defensive play by Tallahassee there. Coming in to make the tackle, that was Carter Sayers. Yep. Who Good stopped guy. him for no gain. Third down. Good read by Carter Sayers right there. Um, they're just doing a delayed, they're continuing to do that same delayed handoff over and over and over again. And we got to pick that up and keep from over pursuing it. Basically, they're letting us over-pursue is what they're doing and then blocking us out of the play. Running play, not this time. Defense got in there and put it on Grady, and it will bring up fourth down. He lost a yard, fourth down to five there at midfield, and uh, actually spotted him back behind the 50. Let's see where they place it down to be sure. They are going to give them that four progress back at 50. Fourth down in about six. Borgard, looks like they're going to go for it. Well, now here comes the punter. Yeah, here goes the punter. Pike Road up on the near 21-13 in the second quarter. It is 28-0. Clay Central putting it on Elmore County tonight. Uh, Elmore County is getting to see up close and personal what we saw last week, I think. Tallahassee choosing not to put anybody back to return it. Here comes the punt by Gaither. A long line drive that will hit inside the 20. Roll inside the 10. Wow. And roll down at the seven. I don't know why we we're not choosing to return tonight, but that's a decision that's been made, and it's costing us some yards on rolls. That puts it down at the Tallahassee seven. We'll have to start deep in our own territory with 340 till halftime, up 14-7. Real Town 13-6 lead. They're up on Goshen. That game also in the second quarter. We kind of figured that game would be pretty good between Real Town and Goshen. Yeah, uh, Goshen trying to challenge the Rebels, who have not been challenged in their first few games this year. See if Tallahassee can get something here. We'll use this last 340 to our advantage. Do have a timeout to work with. Morris looking, and is going to throw it down the field. Shumley, oh. and he can't find it. It's incomplete. A little too long on that one. Second down. Had yeah. one-on-one -on -one coverage over there. Yeah, Chum had a step on him right there, and then he kind of lost his footing right here when he was supposed to cut back on the um, sideline. They almost had that one hooked up. Thought the offensive line did a good job of giving him some time to throw the football. McCoy 
comes in motion. It'll be Morris running, keeping, and getting it up to the 10, maybe the 11-yard line. Give us some room to breathe and also a manageable third down coming up as he picked up five, third down and five to go. One of the things I would like to see out of that spread formation is let's run the football. Run a draw. I was mentioned that a while ago. Let's put it back in the spread like we're going to chunk it and do a quarterback draw out of it. Spread them out. Holstick made the tackle of that. He's about 115 pounds bigger than Morris. Here's a running play to McCoy. Got the good block. He's going to get it out close to the first down. Did he get it? He needed a 17. I'm not sure based on the spot. Boy, he's going to be close. Looked like a good block out there by Segrist. What's that, Brad? It, it looks like we're going to have it. Okay. That's wonderful. Because Tattlesey needs to keep the ball away from Beauregard and maybe even get a chance to put some more points on the board. First down for the Tigers. They say, yes, it is a first down. They'll stop the clock at 224 and move those chains. Huge run there. Good blocking outside right. by the Tigers. It's once again a first down carry by McCoy. Good run by Tremell. Um, he's a young man that's really never played football. This is his first year. He's a 10th um, grader, and he'll, he'll kind of learn as he gets a little bit more comfortable to hit the hold just a little bit harder. I think he had another yard or two in him. Yeah, I've heard some comments about how much of an athlete he is. He is very talented. Here's Hooks made a nice cutback, broke a tackle, but only able to get maybe a yard that time. Borgard was all over that one. Under two minutes. And it'll be second down and nine. Town will see no hurry. I think we're content if we can get to halftime with a 14 7 lead. 130 on the clock till then. Morris with a couple of receivers to his left, one more on the right side. Hooks is back there with it. I'd let him test his arm strength one time. I ain't going to lie to you. Play fake and look at the pass. He is going to throw it down the field. He's got an open man. It's Ellis. It's a perfect throw and a catch at the 40. Down to the 35. A huge throw and catch from Morris to Ellis. Look at the arm strength of Trent Morris. How many yards would that off? Hold on a minute. Let me get all these calculations. I don't want to get in, get in the head of math on that one right there. Oh. That was pretty. He threw that one about 50 yards right there in the air. At least, I think, uh, based on where he caught it. That is uh, quite impressive and a beautiful ball, too. Well, now that's going to make the defense. 49. 49. That's good. It's first down. Time uh, is called by Borgar with 59 seconds until halftime. We'll take a quick break. we got to get in field goal range. So that, that puts us in striking. I need a trim, a new dishwasher, and a much-needed vacation. Do you see any grays? Mm. Sounds like you need a personal loan. My friend just got a loan from Guardian Credit Union, and he used it to upgrade his kitchen appliances. That's what I need to do. Guardian has great rates and a friendly team that makes payments affordable. Perfect. I guess that was really good. Man, that Guardian. Yep. Really good. Tallahassee's leading florist is Godwin's Flower in the same location since 1971. Check, check your mic again, Brad. Godwin flowers are always fresh and always the highest quality. For any I'm coming back. Delivering to most of the area. Hey, walk, just walk away from the sideline. I just want to see if, it, if it's interference over there. I think it's batteries, actually. Seriously? All right, we got batteries up here. You yeah, get them at halftime. Uh, no, that's pass interference, man. He's all over him. No Are you call. kidding me? No call. Mm. Well, a pass incomplete. Looked like a lot of contact down there as Morris tried to connect with Ellis once again. No flag. And at least second and 10. The ball at the 33 of Beauregard. Tattles up 14 7 with 49 seconds remaining in this first half of play. Looking to uh, go to this two-minute drill now that we've got some field position. Everybody going out, and Morris has time to throw this time. 
had plenty of time to run. He's looking for a receiver. He throws underneath. The catch is made, and down goes Chumley. A short gain to the 28. Tannelsey has to hurry. They only have one timeout. The clock stopped for some reason for a moment. Now it's running again, 37 seconds. Got to hurry. We're losing a lot of time here trying to get everybody in place. 29 seconds. Here's third down. Morris will throw underneath. Catch made by Ellis. Got the first down. He will get down to the 15. May have should have gotten out of bounds. They're going to have to use that timeout. Possibly they'll stop the clock just for the moment to move the chain. 17.5. Good throw and catch there. There's a flag down, though. Let's see about that. Oh. It's against Tallahassee. Well, negate that first down with a penalty. The penalty is against Tallahassee. Third down. Holding is the call. Holding is the indication against the Tigers. 17.5 on the clock. And I don't know why we're going to just let the clock run down here. 39 seconds. Better hurry. 10 seconds. Time is called by Tannelsey. We'll keep it here with 5.3. I'm kind of surprised there. That we, I guess since it's third and long, we didn't want to get another play. Uh, possibly have a four guard situation. We'd probably heave it up here. You got the arm, obviously, from the 39. We'll try to send them down the field and try to get a touchdown here. Yeah, too bad. It's too bad, though, because we, uh, if we had a first down there, that's right. Uh, we could have kicked the field goal. Yeah, we definitely uh, I mean, would have had time range. at least to get yeah. a field goal. Yeah, and they were a little too far out now. Well, we could, no time left to do it. Well, if he stretches the field, we could get a pass interference and we still got another play if we it's get down close enough. So yeah, we'll that see. is a chance, yeah. Or get a touchdown. 28-13 is the score with Pike Road leading Lanier now. Realtown has gone ahead 21-6 in their game. Those are second quarter scores. <laughs> Appreciate the messages tonight. We're getting them. I'm trying to read them as I go. A lot of uh, information out there on some other games that people are attending. We'll have some scores at the half. 5.3 seconds till half in the Parker Tired Service Center Halftime report is coming up next. Can't wait to see the band. We're going to get some shots from the field from Tiger Nation. Third down from the Tiger. All right, this is basically it. From the 39, third down and about 16. We're bidding a penalty. It should be the final play of the half. Morris with a three-man rush. Has time. He is going to throw it down the field for Ellis. Ellis is there, but he had double coverage, couldn't make a play on the ball. Incomplete, no flags. That will do it. We have played a half, a very good one for the Tallahassee Tigers, their first lead at halftime in four games, and they played a great half of football. we still got 24 minutes to go. We have the halftime show up next with the Pride and the Alumni Band. Keep it here. That's coming up next on WTLS, Tallahassee Times TV, and Spectrum. From Monday morning quarterbacking to play-by-play coverage of the Alabama Crimson Tide and the Tallahassee Tigers, we've got the Lindy's Football Report and Nick Saban Show on Thursday nights and on location broadcast on Fridays with the wake-up call at First Community Bank in River Region Sports, live at Louie's. Regardless of the day, we're always kicking the pigskin around. WTLS, score 94 and hit 106. All of us at HDD Broadband are extremely proud to offer our state-of-the-art fiber-to-the-home network. We are now offering residential packages, which consist of 250 megabytes for $65 a month, 500 megabytes for $75 a month, 1 gig for $95 a month, and 2.5 and gigs for $165 a month. We've lowered our residential rates as we committed to in 2022 and have incorporated a 1 gig service and a 2.5 and gig service for residential and commercial customers. Current customers may call and adjust their data packages if they wish or enjoy their new adjusted rate based on their current service. Please give us a call at 334-430-0049 to apply for service and information on our new rates. You may add us on Facebook at HDD Broadband to stay up to date on our current locations and updates on pre-registration. Feel free to view our webpage at hddbroadband.com. GI Lab at Community Hospital is one of the leading specialty departments in our area. 
The GI lab specializes in performing diagnostic and therapeutic procedures such as colonoscopy, which is the gold standard for colon cancer detection. Colon cancer is the second leading cause of death in the United States. More than 50,000 people lose their life to this disease each year. Colon cancer does not discriminate and it affects all racial and ethnic backgrounds. Colon cancer can occur at any age, but those 50 years or older have an increased risk for developing colon cancer. At Community Hospital, the GI Lab's main goals are to increase awareness of colon cancer, encourage participation in the colon screening process, and perform these screenings with a caring and professional attitude. Schedule an appointment today with Dr. Tom Bianchi, our gastroenterologist, at 283-3862. The GI Lab at Community Hospital is here to provide our community with quality, compassionate health care. People are talking about revived traditions. It's not football or baseball or basketball, not soccer, volleyball, or lacrosse, but it goes with any sport. It's Louie's Chicken Fingers, 1410 Gilmer Avenue in Tallahassee. Louie's has chicken fingers, wings, catfish, hush puppies, fresh veggies, salads, wraps, and more. Catering is available, too. Specials and updates on Facebook at Louie's of Tallahassee. Before the game, after the game, anytime is Louie's time. Louie's Chicken Fingers, 1410 Gilmer Avenue, 991-4367. Hey, it's Brad Parker and Jamie Bush at Parker Tire and Service Center. It's tailgating time. Don't let car trolls ruin your road trips. Let us help you with new Michelin, Uniroyal, BF Goodrich, and Toyo tires. Whether you're headed to the big game or just across town, change your oil, lube, and filter. And don't forget a checkup for your engine. Parker Tire and Service Center. 1508 Gilmer Avenue in Tallis. We as a community should be aware of the huge importance and the role small businesses contribute to our community. Small businesses impact Tallahassee in a variety of ways, from interpersonal relationships to local government to the economy. The economic benefits of small businesses are numerous. With the revenue that small businesses generate, this tax money gets fed into the local economy to create better opportunities and more resources within our community. Please look at Tallahassee first and shop local. WTLS, Tallahassee, Pike Road. The home for the Tallahassee Tigers since 1954. Score 94 and hit 106. It's intermission. That means it's time for the Parker Tire and Service Center Halftime Report. And welcome back to the Parker Tire and Service Center Halftime Report. Stephen Oz Osborne here with Brad Davis. And um, I've, I've got to take it over right here because I got some stats. I got some stats, man. We it's got good, good stats uh, hey, this week. Yeah, it's, it's good <laughs> when we got something to talk about. All right, yeah. Tossy, first down, seven first downs, rushes 17 for 168 yards, three of 11 passing for 60 yards. Um, uh, held it for a pretty good time possession for uh, Borgard, six first downs, 14 rushes for 76 yards. They are um, two of four on passing for 11 yards. A, a much better first first half, much better oh, uh, production. Yeah. I mean, and, and flying around the field. Yeah, and, there, you know, you guys have seen it up here, I'm sure. There's a lot of, um, a lot of different uh, personnel groupings as far as where kids are playing, and they move some kids around. You know, we're um, of the three quarterbacks we had, we're down to two. One's out. We'll have surgery on Monday. So, um, you know, they're just trying to get the, the the best eleven on the field they can. And so, you know, Battles is now moved out to one of the uh, one of the slot receivers. It looks like the, the majority of the time, and Trent's running uh, quarterback. And uh, we've got a McCrary's back in the backfield. Gives us some uh, another set of legs back there. Just a lot, uh, a lot of good positive things. You know, we. We, we've we've had a couple of doggone three ball games that have have really been a, a struggle for us from uphill from the very beginning. This one started out really good. Got two two quick scores there in the first quarter. Um, you know the one um, I really couldn't tell from where we were. You guys may have a better uh, surely you got a better view up here, but I don't know if we catch that uh, that fake punt if we're going to have a first down or not. It was a it was a really good play. I thought we had a chance and. Um, 
you know, when we didn't we didn't do that, we gave them the short field, and they come down and score. But otherwise, you know, we, we've played really good defense. Uh, we're giving up a, a, a play, you know, here or there, but uh, but standing up and, 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 you know, playing really good defense. So I'm proud of the guys. You know, it's, it's what uh, you guys have talked about and we've talked with Coach uh, about over the, the last three or four games or the last two or three games is, you know, you just want to see the kids come out and fight, right? And if that's, if that's what you're asking them to do, that's exactly what they've done the first half. Second half, we'll see if they come out. A lot of energy on the sidelines. You know, we've talked about some of the, the drop-off on that. It, it, it sort of felt like the kids were, were defeated early on in a few games. But, uh, man, there's a lot of energy on the sidelines, and I think they understand what they're doing here, and that's just trying to become a better ball team than they were last week. Yeah, and, um, I mean, it just looks like a more dynamic offense with uh, – with Trent running it, it's um, he's got an arm on him, and it's it's fun to watch him sling it around. Even though we haven't had a lot of completions, it's fun to watch him stretch the field, make the defense have to make that adjustment. I was surprised by the three and eleven. I, I, it felt more like a six for eleven. But yeah. uh, hey, whatever it is, we're up at half. Uh, That's you know, right. We're, uh, we we scored. A, uh, we had a touchdown in the first half, which is the first time in. In, in, in the first three games. So. And we're going to make this an abbreviated halftime show because the, the alumni band is coming up. This has been the Parker Tire and Service Center Halftime Report. We'll be back in just a moment. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Dr. Brock Nolan, Superintendent of Tallahassee City Schools, and Mr. Drew Glass, Principal of Tallahassee High School, we proudly present the Tallahassee High School Marching Band. This evening, we would like to welcome back over 150 alumni band members to J.E. Hot O'Brien Stadium. These members span the years from the 1950s all the way to 2023. What started with 34 members in 1938 has grown to over 140 students in the middle school and 105 students in the high school band and several thousand students over 85 years. Tonight, the band will be performing songs that have been important to the Tallahassee Band throughout its history. The alumni band is joined on the field by current band members to create a 250-member band. Fourteen seven Tanelsey in front of Borgard at the break. It's the Parker Tire and Service Center halftime report. And what a sight. The Brown of Tanelsey about to perform with the reunion of many bandmates from years gone by from the Brown of Tanelsey and Long Blue Lines. Let's listen in as the Tanelsey High School Marching Band, new and old, meet for our halftime entertainment. Ladies and gentlemen, here's all of the Tanelsey High School Marching Band.
The band has had different directors through the years, but the most notable was Mr. Ed Watkins, known to all as the Colonel. Mr. Watkins' tenure began in 1950, and for 37 years, he led what was then known as the Long Blue Line. Though the school colors have always been purple and gold, the band wore blue uniforms for many years. Forty years ago, in 1984, the band students voted to change the name to the Pride of Tallahassee. Our next selection features our auxiliary as we play a song that we've been playing since the late 1960s, the only number one record ever written by a man from Grove Hill, Alabama, Cliff Noble. Here is The Horse. to thank a junior member of our band who already owns his own t-shirt printing business, Wild Faith. His company made these alumni band shirts for us. Thank you, Mr. Amari Parker. There are three people whose contributions to our music program have spanned the decades. We would like to recognize three of our senior band members who have been supporting the TH band, THS band longer than just about anyone. Please step out when we call your name. From the class of 1961 and the founder and director of the Fabulous Follies, Mrs. Pat Merritt. From the class of 1964 and in her 62nd year as our majorette sponsor, Mrs. Dickie Oliver Baker. And from the class of 1965, the drum major for the 64 Long Blue Line, our booster club president for 30 years, and current chairman of the Board of Education, Mr. Don Bryant. We are truly grateful for everyone who joined us for this historic anniversary. And we also want to thank our band director, Dr. Robbie Glasscott, for 23 years of service to the Tallahassee High School Band. Thank you, Dr. G, for making a difference. And now we'd like to recognize people who've traveled the furthest to be here tonight. From a journey of 15 hours away in Oklahoma, from the class of 2011, Mrs. Blair Casey Hemphill. From nine hours away in North Carolina, from the class of 2012, Mrs. Tawny Fitzhugh Craft. For the past 85 years, whether it was called the Long Blue Line or the Pride of Tallahassee, the Tallahassee Marching Band has been a family in the truest sense of the word. Many of the people you see on the field tonight have had other family members in the band or are in the current band now. In some cases, there are as many as three generations of family members marching together on this field. We have always striven to be a place where students could belong to a greater community and a family. We close our performance with the fight song of Tallahassee High School since 1938. THS loyalty.
A uh, beautiful uh, job by our different members of the bands, old and new, coming together tonight, filling up most of the field at Jay Otterbrine Stadium. So many have come through through the years. Great to see that. Really enjoyed it, and I'm sure the fans here did as well. 14-7, Tallahassee putting on the show at halftime, leading Beauregard. We'll take a break and come back and get you ready for the second half next here on WTLS, Tallahassee Times TV and Spectrum. Time for the Student Athlete of the Week is sponsored by Mike Segris, District Attorney. This week, it is J. Twan Griffin, the son of Jamie Taylor, plays offensive and defensive line for the Tigers, been on the varsity squad for the last three years. This is his 13th year in the sport. He's a member of the THS wrestling team as well, where he's wrestled for the past six years, and he also participates in track. J. Chuan throws the discus, javelin, and shot put. This will be his fifth year on the track team. J. Chuan also enjoys being in the choir and participating with the show choir. After graduation, he plans to go to Troy University, unsure of his major yet, but thinking about business and management. He'd like to own his own business one day. In his spare time, J. Chuan likes to spend time with his community and family, watching film and football. When asked what his dream job is, he replies, uh, I'd like to uh, be a state trooper or even a teacher or a coach. And said he may uh, do one of those things if he gets a business started. While at THS, he's maintained a GPA of 2.7, an 82 average. He has nickname. Do you know this one, Philip? Mm, Figured I, you'd know this, Coach Nelson. You, you coach him in, in wrestling some. I ought to, but I don't. Twizzle. Twizzle. Jude, okay. you knew that, didn't you? No? You didn't know it either. Oh, okay. Well, only Coach Mixon does, I guess. Coach Mixon came up with Twizzle uh, because he said he uh, liked the way he twisted his hair. It looked like Twizzlers. <laughs> uh, that's his, fa his favorite food that's is breakfast. His favorite color is lime green, and his favorite subject is math. When asked what he likes best about the new school, he says the colors and the sitting areas. The advice he'd give any younger players is to keep working, stay focused, and stay together. One thing that's unusual about him is that he only drinks a soda about once every few months. Says he has an allergic acid reaction. That's J. Twan Griffin. He is your student oh. athlete of the week. Again, presented by District Attorney Mike Seeger. So let's give you some scores as we get ready for the second half of action. Uh, interesting uh, what we're seeing from some of these, especially what's happening in Eclectic tonight. It is 35 to nothing. Elmore County trailing Clay at halftime. Central of Clay County putting on a show. That's what they did to us last week. They're doing it to Elmore County, a team that hasn't lost a game so far. Real Town's up 27 to 12. That's a halftime score. It's uh, Pike Road leading their game with Lanier. The last check we had was uh, 28 to 21. Uh, just got one from Alabama Christian and Trinity, and Trinity's up 14 nothing at halftime. Let's see, I think there's a few others that I might be able to get in before we start this second half. And appreciate everybody sending these scores tonight. we got folks all over the place watching these. And by the way, that Pike Road score is now updated. It's 
Pike Road. Booker T on top of Geneva, 30 to eight. That's at halftime. You've got Dothan over Prattville, 22 to six. Dave will lead Sachs, it's 28 nothing. Catholic with another blowout tonight. They're up on Slocum, 35 to nothing. Those are halftime scores. Dale County leads Montgomery Academy, 21-14. That's at the half. And Auburn, 44 nothing over Jag. Halftime. Opelika and Central playing tonight. That's Central Phoenix City leading 14 to 10. That game is in the third quarter already. And Harbor 13, Russell County nothing. Those are the ones we have so far. Auburn, yeah, I got that one. Thank you to all the folks who are sending those in. Yeah. We'll keep you updated in the second half. That, that Pike Road Lanier game is pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> Well, it's a shootout, 35-27. Yeah. Sure is. You got that right. They've still got a lot of football left to be played in that one. Well, you know, Lanier's a pretty good football team. It just, you don't know which one's going to show up sometimes. Well, we got the 14-7 lead. We played really well in the first half. We're going to have to play a little defense to start. Borgard will get the ball to start this second half. And uh, let's see if we can keep that going. I'm going be, I'm to be interested in the second half. Um, what kind of adjustments we make maybe to keep some wrinkles in the offense to keep Borgard, you know, off balance. Certainly that 50-yard pass that we completed right before halftime will help open up some running lanes because they can't just stack the box and let us keep hitting 50-yard passes over the top. So, you know. That's right. We'll see. Carswell's going to tee it up at the 40-yard line. A lot of folks came back from that alumni band. It was great to it see that. It was awesome, man. That was awesome to see, dude. We were hearing numbers around 150 that were coming back to perform tonight, and I think they probably had that. There was a lot of folks on that field. Number 24, Alex Carswell. It was really good to see, like, Miss Vicky and Mr. Don and some of them from way back in the day. And number 80, Morgan. Holloway's going to get a chance at the 20 off the kick from Carswell. Comes across the field looking for an opening. He's got one across the 30. He's to the 40, still moving up near midfield. A good return to the 49-yard line of Borgard. So a great start for the Hornets. Down a score, touchdown lead for the Tigers as we start this third quarter. Yeah, that's not necessarily the way we really wanted to start the half. But our defense has been playing pretty good tonight, so... Let's get them behind the sticks again. First down 10 for the Hornets at the 48. Jones, quarterback, Doolittle to his left. Four-man front for the Tigers. But they're bringing some pressure, it looks like. A little pitch to Holloway. Got a little opening. He made a couple of nice moves inside the Tigers. 50 to the 46. He picked up seven. And it'll be second down and three. That was a little bit different wrinkle from Beauregard on that play. I don't think we've seen number that one tonight. McKenzie, number nine, Eli Wigginson, yeah, a little stop. pitch to the slot guy coming yep. around. Actually, it be recorded as a reception. Threw it forward, did Jones. Do a little to his right from the gun on second down. He's going to throw quickly out of the backfield, looking for the block. Got it. Holman's got first down yardage across the 40 to the 35. Still keeps his feet moving. Can't make the tackle. Finally take him down out of bounds at the 23 of Tallahassee. Yeah. Couldn't wrap him up and take him down. That was, just, that was a good hard run by their running back number 18. But um, we've got to do a little bit better job of wrapping up right there because he picked, he picked up an extra about seven or eight yards he should not have got. Little pitch again it is going to be Holloway inside the 15. He will be taken down at the 14. That's a good hard hit by Chase Chumley. Uh, coming up from his safety spot, from his free safety spot, to uh, cut him down before he scored a touchdown. We actually got a hand on him in the backfield, so we read the play. We just got to do um, just a little bit better job of getting him in the backfield. Almost got the first down there. Picked up nine, second down, and a yard to go. Doolittle on the handoff. 
First down to the 11, driven out of bounds right there. Tackle by Cortland Roberts. First down for Beauregard, right at about the 10. And they spot it just on the side of the 10. They did take the chains away, so first and goal to go. Yeah, they just ran that one to the short side of the field. Jones looks to the sideline for the play. Pistol formation handoff, right side Grady. He's going to go to the nine. Not much there. Good defense that time by the Tigers. And it'll be second down to go. Yeah, that was a good uh, job of adjusting by the defensive line and the linebackers um, of setting that play. Basically what they're trying to do is run it to the weak side of the formation. We're stacked on the strong side on, on our right side over here. And they're just trying to bounce one to the outside on the um, short side of the field. Spotted down at the eight there. Here's second down, looking to throw this time. Here comes pressure. They got a hold up and they take him down. Back right, at the 20-yard line. Big defensive play by Tallahassee. Sacked by Carter five, Sayers, six, number five six, of the seven, Tallahassee Tigers. Great play, down, Carter Sayers. Four. Read that play, snuffed it out on a blitz. Way to wrap up, way to take him down for a loss. Huge play, third down coming up. They're back. They spotted it at the 17. That's where Ford Progress was marked. And let's see if Tallahassee can make a play here third on a third goal. down. You think four down territory, possibly a field goal opportunity if they don't get close here. It's third and goal from the 17. Jones has a little time looking to throw. He will. He's got an open receiver. He threw it too high. Holloway couldn't hold on to it. It'll be fourth down. Yeah, if Jaden McKenzie would have looked up on that play, he actually had an interception, but he was doing the right thing. He was focusing on the wide receiver right there, uh, trying to make sure he didn't pick up anything after the catch. They're going to try a field goal, so here comes Lugo on to attempt what will be about a 35-yard field goal. They're going to spot it down at the 25. I'm going to give you all some wrestling slash football history. This young man kicking the football. Our man to the right over here, Jude, used to wrestle him all the time in youth. Jude helping us tonight, Jude Rogers. Yes. Good snap and hold. The kick's up, and it is no good. Wide left. Big miss on a long try and a big stop by the Tattlesey defense. Tattlesey will take over at their own 20-yard line. First and 10, 9.03 to go in the third quarter. Dodged a bullet on a nice drive by Borgard, but the defense from Tallahassee stands. They stood tall. Proud of them, man. That sack, though, set that up. No doubt. By Carter. That was a heads up. Good play by Carter Sayers. And that sack proved to be the difference in that drive. Well, this would be a nice drive if we could just take the ball right down the field and get some more points. Yes. Drain some clock. First down, 10. That's a 20. Bringing some meat in, I just saw. Big 250-pounder coming on the field there. Time is called by the Hornets. We'll take a break, 2 9 3 to go in the third quarter. Tallahassee 14, Borgard 7. Was running up, lining up on May I have your attention, please? The winner of the 2024 prom raffle is money market, and CDs. If you're wanting to buy a boat or automobile or thinking of refinancing your home, come see one of our loan officers and we'll be glad to assist you. First Community Bank has been serving the Tallahassee community for over seven years. We are your locally owned hometown community bank. Please call us at 283-2299 or visit us on the web at fcbca.com. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Score 94 and hit 106. Tallahassee on first down after the Borgard timeout. Goes forward for a gain of three. Yeah, that was Joseph Hooks on the carry. Second down at seven. We were just trying to outman him. Yeah, it'd be nice to just line up and go right at them, see if we could hold her on. <laughs> Not a bad deal. Shumley and Ellis to the right side. 
It will be a running play with Morris. We'll take it up across the 25 through the 26. And it will be third down and four for the Tigers. Well, at least we're in third and manageable right here. We're coming back with that same formation. Uh, I see Michael Moore coming back in, number 99, which is going to be a blocking back. Um, Caleb Segrist is in there as a blocking back also. And then I can't see who's on the other side over there. Hooks in in the Wildcat. Here comes the play right. He's going to try to pop it outside. He is going to be hit down short of the first down. He got to the 28, but he needed the 30. So fourth and two coming up. And you'd expect the punt right here. Stopped by number two, Van Dixon. Looked like he was about to spring that one for a pretty good game. Um, give Beauregard credit for closing that hole extremely fast. Those high snaps are throwing our timing off on that. It's happened a couple of times, but yeah, there's a hole right there. Huh. The official, uh, interesting, uh, Brody Wisner coming on with a snapping. He brought his own ball and he uh, gave the other one to the uh, official on the field and uh, he let him keep it. I, I thought he might make him send the other one back. Got our special ball here. Maybe there's some helium in there or something. Here's Battles to punt. Pressure, he got it off. Holloway calls for a fair catch and makes it at the 48. Well, that was close. First down, the Hornets back Holloway. about where they started from on the opening drive of the third quarter with it in 6.54, down 14-7 to Tannelsey. We just need our defense right here to continue to stand tall and make plays. Beauregard's offense back out there after a three and out by Tattlesey. First down 10 for the Hornets at the 48. Jones, the ninth grade quarterback for Beauregard in this battle of freshmen tonight. Morris on the other side will take it and throw it to Holman. Holman's got the catch, and he will get to midfield to the 48. Pass complete, number and picked Holman. up five. A swing pass out yeah, to the right receiver is... Six. Been a play they've gone to multiple times tonight. Yeah, they don't really sling it down the field. They're more side to side type team. We're giving a little cushion too. We don't want to get beat up top. As it'll be second and five, but ball at the 48 of Tannelsey. And it will be a running play. Doolittle, there's room for him. He's got a first down. Shoestring grab by Sears, saving that from being a big play. It is enough for a first down to the 41. And here comes a late flag after the play. Yeah, that we can't have that. We've avoided a lot of penalties tonight. Had a couple of petty penalties early, but... This one's going to be a 15-yarder against Tannelsey. Personal foul penalty against Tannelsey will add 15. Everybody in the stadium saw that one. Yeah, but none of them saw Carter Sayers being held and dragged down the field. <laughs> he could have had the play. That, that's the only reason I mentioned that. Moves it down to the 27. It's first down, Beauregard. Six minutes to go in this third quarter. 14-7, Tannelsey in front. Jones on the shotgun again. He wants to throw, and he will over the middle. And the pass is incomplete, right with good defense. Knocked it away. Got a hand in there to impede the pass, which was intended for Van incomplete. Yeah, Rush has had some good plays on defense tonight, breaking up passes like that. Way to, uh, way to play your man, stay in front of the ball. High pointed it, knocked it down. Second down and 10. Trips to the right, one to the left for Jones in the gun again. Skipped the heat break. I guess they forgot about it. I guess so. Not that hot. Nah. Looks to throw underneath. Catch made this time. And uh, going to be a gain of uh, about four to the 20. One or 22, and it'll bring up third down. That was, again, intended for Van. This time he was able to catch it, and there's that heat break timeout. 5.35 to go. It'll be a third down coming up for Beauregard. Tattlesey leads 14-7.
Does it matter if they're my Christian brother or or not? Does it make a difference that they're made by a machine, a factory, made by hand, by a single person? Hardy's made from scratch biscuits with caramel icing and plum topping because there's nothing fresh about frozen biscuits. Not too. My name is TJ Gray. I work in the Department 582. It is a great place to work because of the benefit and I'm exactly 60 seconds from work. Neptune Technology Group, Policy, Alabama. Score 94 and hit 106. Third down play coming up, six to go after the heat break. 22-yard line of Tallahassee, Borgard down a touchdown. Third down six for the Hornets. Jones hands off, it is Grady. Grady's got a first down, 20, 15, 10, five, touchdown. Position number 11, DJ Grady, goes in for the Hornets touchdown. 22-yard touchdown run, 14-13. We're a point away from being tied. Yeah, they ran that same play that they ran the drive before. They overloaded us on this side and went to the weak side. Lugo to try to tie the game. Number six, Josh Lugo to attempt to point out the touchdown. Holding is number 12. Low snap, kick up, kick. Is good. Just got it inside the upright, and it's a 14-all game. Tied up with 5.19 to go in the third quarter. Tattlesey Tigers football from WTLS. Score 94 and hit 106. Lugo to kick. 14-14 game. Chance for McCoy. Takes it at the 12, 15, 20 yard line. 25, 30 yard line. 35. Boy, if he could have cut back to the right just a little once he saw that crease, he might still be running. But it is still a good return out to the 35. The Tigers take it. We got a new ball game. Tattlesey opened the game with a 14-0 lead. Borgard battled back to get a score before half. And now here in the third quarter, they have scored again, and we're knotted up for the first time <coughs> since we started this thing. Well, right here is got to answer the bell, right? We've let them get back in the ball game. So now we need a good long drive and score a touchdown right here. Morris on first down wants to throw. He uh, will run instead. He'll be hit and knocked out of bounds. Once he got to the 36, he might have gotten a yard. They're not going to give him that. You got to get forward progress, don't you? Uh-uh. They actually marked him where to do, knocked him back to. Hmm. Loss of a yard, second down and 11. Not very well done there. No, I'm going to have to say I disagree with that spot. At least rest. he had the 35. Yeah, easily. Now, I expect that kind of spot over in Borgar, but we're not in Borgar. <laughs> Morris hands off to Hooks going left. He's got some room out there. He will get up to the 40, and it will bring up a third and about five. Yeah, right here is where your offense has got to dig deep. I mean, this is third and manageable. Yeah, it's third and five, I know. 
But we just picked up really about six on that play, almost. Well, we need a first down because we had a three and out on the opening drive of this half. We need right. to spare a defense for a minute, if nothing else. Yes. Trinity leading 17-0 over Alabama Christian. Morris to pass. Throws. Man open. Wells can't get it. Just out of his reach. Walker Wells was the intended receiver. It'll be fourth down. Mm. A lot of pushing and shoving by the safety there. But a no call on the play. Just barely missed him, though. That Actually, that was a good call. I mean, it was there. Plays like that's going to wind up opening up your offense more, though, and get them off the line of scrimmage. Holloway. <laughs> Boy, Coach Jones over here at Borgard, very upset. They didn't have the right personnel on the field. They had to use up one of their timeouts. We'll take it to 4-16 to go. Third quarter tied up at 14. Don't forget, after your trim, to kick back with a shampoo, scalp treatment, hot steam towel, and massage. No appointment necessary. Game day clips, 1224 Gilmer Avenue next to 1220 Cafe in Tallahassee and 102 Deatsville Highway next to the Front Porch Grill in Millbrook. Game day clips, where it's always game day. Football and tailgating, two great traditions in the South. Here's another one that makes them better. Shopping at Tallahassee Superfood. Stock up on great tailgating items that make football watching even better. And if you're the host of a big party on Saturday, do it right with great steaks or boneless chicken breasts or a grilling favorite, smoked sausage. Throw on the fixins and you're ready for football. Get it all at cost plus 10% at either location. Tallahassee Superfoods on Gilmer Avenue or on Nota Solta Road in East Tallahassee. Score 94. Third catch is six scored by number three, Holloway. First half team for the Hornets. Battles punts. And Holloway fair catches at the 34 Borgard as they get the football back. Back to back three and outs for the Tigers on offense. And now the defense called on again to try to make a play here or two. Yes, uh, the ball back as we are at the 406 mark of this third quarter. 14 14 score. Comes a handoff right side, Doolittle. He's across the 40 and up to the 42. He's close to another first down. Eight yard game. Shot made by number five. We're getting to the play. We're just overrunning it. If we would quit overrunning the play. Got nine, second and one. Hornets have a player hobble off. They need to watch this uh, go back to the weak side of the ball. They need to watch that screen again out here. Yeah. See if they go back to that. Well, they got a college size tackle out there. Well, they pretty sure close. Yep, yep, yep. 296 yards. There's a left side pass to Holman. Gets away from the first defender and will be tackled by Chumley up around the 50. Marked down at the 49 of Borgard. It's a first down. 3.09 to go in this third quarter of play. And Borgard moves the chains again. Looks like time is gone. Yeah. And Tannelsey will take this one. Take another break. 2.56 to go, third quarter, tied at 14.
First down, 10 for the Hornets. Doolittle on the running play as we return to live action. Gets it to the 46 of Tallahassee, picking up six yards. It's second down and four. Beauregard after the timeout. Both teams have used a couple of timeouts already. As we are still in the third quarter. Two and a half minutes left and a 14-14 game. They're trying to pick up yeah, the cheap. Almost got there. a jump, but no official call there. Watch the play on a hard back count. This side. Looking to pass, going deep this time down the field. All oh, kinds of contact. Could have been an offensive pass to fear. It's a push, but no call, incomplete. And Coach Battles is letting him have it over there, too, because that was clearly offensive pass interference on that play. And we got a player down. It might be Roberts. I think he was the one that got pushed in the back. Yeah, he's cramping. Time on the field to uh, deal with that. Gives us a chance to take another quick break. 2.10 to go, third quarter, 14 all. Wealth management discusses the markets and the economy on the comfort zone in plain English. Drawing on 30 years of experience, she dissects what's going on in the financial world. Susan is the principal and founder of More Wealth Management, which has offices in Montgomery, Alexander City, and Auburn, Alabama's Power Triangle, where Alabama works, plays, governs, and learns. Tune in to the Comfort Zone on WTLS or call 1-800-88-MONEY for more information. More Wealth Management is affiliated with LPL Financial, a member of FINRA and SIPC. Neptune. Hello, my name is Dane Lewis. I work in Department 581 on the pack line. We pack our parts to be shipped every day in my department. I'm constantly learning. I'm constantly evolving, and I just appreciate this experience. Neptune Technology Group, Tallahassee, Alabama. Score 94 and hit 106. Brady on another nice run. The Borgard has another Hornet first down, all the way down to Tallahassee's 21 yard line as we're under two minutes to go in this third quarter. And the ball at the 21. They're starting to lean on us a little bit now. Yeah, and they're trying to run it fast too due to the fact that um, they know we're kind of tired and out of sync. They're just uh, pounding here, running game. Now they're going to throw. Here comes a pass to the end zone. It is dropped and caught again. Did he hold on? He said he did. It's a touchdown. Looked like it was bobbled, but apparently he got his hands underneath it. Did Holman for the touchdown pass from 21 yards away. And Beauregard has taken its first lead. Twenty to fourteen. Lugo and to try the point after. Snap down, kick up, kick. Not a lot on it, but it cleared the crossbar. It's good. 21-14, Beauregard. 1.31 to go, third quarter. Tennessee Tigers football on WTLS. Score 94 and hit 106. Packed innovation so your crew can work quickly and safely in any environment. And now we're making it easier than ever to put a Husqvarna in their hands with our cost-saving fleet program. If you want more Husqvarnas in their hands and more money in your pocket, Get all your new equipment through the Husqvarna Fleet Program. Visit Tallahassee Power and Equipment just past the Y on Tallahassee Highway or online at tallahasseepower.com. Hi, I'm Kari Sid, owner of Grove Station. We want to invite you to come in and join us for lunch, dinner, or brunch. We're open Tuesday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and we run dinner on Thursday and Friday nights from 5 p.m. to 8 Brunch is Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We do private and hosted dining experiences in our loft. We're located in downtown Tallahassee. We're on Facebook and Instagram. See you in a minute. Wake up with the wake up call. Weekdays at 6 on Score 94 and Hit 106. Stream live on Facebook and 1300WTLS.com. Lugo kicks, McCoy to return, grabbed it at the 12, 20-yard line, 25, 
30, 35, still going. Fumble, ball on the ground, and it is. Beauregard ball. Player down on the field from Beauregard. Turnover on the fumble on what was a really good return by McCoy, but it popped out, and the Hornets have recovered it. We'll see about the injured player for Beauregard. As the Hornets have taken over this game here in the third quarter, it was a 14-0 lead early, 14-7 at half. Two touchdowns here in the third quarter has made it a 21-14 lead now for Beauregard. You're not real sure what happened to the young man right here, but, um, you know, our guys, they got to keep their heads up. We're still in this ball game. I'm, yeah, no, that didn't go the way we wanted it to. We had a great return going right there, and, you know, if, if we go down right there, we're in good field position, you know, to try to drive the ball and get our touchdown. But right here. Player injured is Nehemiah Drummond, who will be helped off the field. Give you some scores here from other games. Booker T. Washington up on Geneva, 48-8. to Mike Rode Lanier, 35-27 early in the third quarter. Davil, 42, sack six. Right, hey. Dothan, 29-12 over Prattville. Time, Catholic still up 35-0, and that is early in the third. St. James, a 42-0 lead over Greensboro. Dale County, 21-14 up on Montgomery Academy. Central of Clay County, 42, and Elmore County, nothing. Third quarter. Running right side is Doolittle. He and he'll get it to the 35, maybe 34. He pretty much tackled our guy. Yeah, I don't know how they didn't call a hold on that because Caleb Seegers had him, and their offensive lineman just grabbed him and threw him to the ground right in front of the white hat. I have to ask once again. A couple of yards, second down and eight at the 35 of Tallahassee. Borgard trying to capitalize on the Tiger turnover. Leading it right now, 21-14 as we wind down this third quarter of play. And off right side, Doolittle got by the first man through, keeps his feet moving, breaks a couple of tackles, and a lot of running to get to the 30. And it will bring up third down as we wrap up the third quarter. 21-14, Tannelsey leading it. Not sure if they're going to run another play. They're lining up like they might with about 10 seconds on the clock, third and short. I think they're, yeah, trying to get they're done. Size. That's going to end the third quarter of play. Our scorer, Tannelsey trailing Beauregard after three, 21-14. Tannelsey Tigers football on WTLS. Score 94 and hit 106. Yeah, we've opened up a new group in our business, installing swimming pools, and we've really enjoyed some success with it. I know this is the season to start putting in the pools as we move out of pool season. Kind of funny you bring that up because pool season for us is this time of year. We're doing pools that will fit basically any budget. We've got them from 10 feet long all the way up to 60 feet long. How do they get in touch with you? Bell Contracting on Facebook, bellcontractingllc.com on the Internet. We'd love to visit with you. There's a new vet clinic in central Alabama. 4D Veterinary Services is now open on Highway 14 just past Heron's Crossroads. 4D is a full-service clinic with the latest state-of-the-art equipment. From x-rays to surgeries, you can rely on 4D. Open weekdays from 7.30 to 5.30. Appointments preferred, walk-ins welcome. 4dvet.com. On Facebook and Instagram, 4D Veterinary Services. Through three quarters, four guard now in front, 21-14. First downs, Tallahassee with seven, 22 rushes for 181 yards, three for 12 for 60 yards. For Beauregard, 12 first downs, 23 rushes for 143 yards. They're nine of 14 for 84 yards passing. Here are the Hornets with third and short, running right. And second effort by Doolittle will get him the first down to the 20 of the Tigers. And we got a Tattlesee player or two slow to their feet. Segrist being one, Hooks the other. Hooks is on his feet now. Caleb still needing some assistance. be 
be a cramping situation. He's walking kind of that way. Yeah. Well, we got to come up with a stand here somehow, some way, down by seven as we're in the fourth quarter now. Borgard knocking on the door in the red zone at the 20. Doolittle is back there with Jones. He's got three receivers to his left side. Pistol formation, handoff. It will be Doolittle. Cuts back. Nice run to get back to the line of scrimmage. Tattles, he had some penetration that time as he made a good cutback, but all of that just to get back to the line. Second down. He's been doing a good job of cutting back across the grain, reading his, uh, basically reading his blocks and doing a good job of cutting back, but that didn't work out too good for him on that time. Second and 10 from the 20. Beauregard was in a close game last week, lost in overtime, double OT to Valley. Jones wants to throw. He will throw towards the end zone, and it is going to be dropped. It was Holman there with McKenzie in coverage. He had it in his hands, and I don't know, maybe McKenzie got a hand in there and knocked it out. Third down and 10. Third down and 10. That would have been a big catch right there. It would have been a touchdown. It would have. The throw was actually there, so. Third and 10, the ball at the Tannelsee 20. Of course, uh, they try to field goal early. If they don't get this, I wonder if they'd come back to it. It would make it a two-possession game. It's going to be a run to Doolittle. He's hit behind the line, and the Tigers are there. McCary and Whittington with a first to meet him. And it will be a stop, and it will bring up fourth down. Now it's fourth and long, and maybe even almost beyond the range, although they tried a 35-yarder earlier. Let's see where they spot this at the 28. This looks like this would be a, about a 45 yard, yeah, a little bit deeper than that one. Yeah. So they may have to go for it. And it's fourth and long now. It was fourth and uh, our third and – a moment ago. Now it's fourth and about 18. Our defense has got to be strong right here. Read your keys and play your play your gaps. Maybe they'll get some pressure. You know he's going to be looking left. That's where they got the receivers. They got whistles at the line. And it is a timeout board guard. We'll keep it here. 10.05 left in the football game and the play of the game so coming up. Unless I'm wrong this week, they're out. Because they had to use one early, then they used one. That should be should have been their last. Yeah, time. and I think they took it away from us instead of them earlier. We're supposed to have two, don't we? Well, yes. the, the scoreboard is not necessarily official. I'm not sure. Uh, I'll go with the odds on that. No, I agree, wise. I remember that. And I think we've only called one. Yeah, the yeah. scoreboard is showing there's one apiece. Well, we got the. Fourth down play coming up, and they're going to throw the ball down the field. We just got to play coverage. Or we got to get a sack. I'll take one of them, too. Uh, Elmore County's down. I think they might come back. They're down 42 to nothing. They're getting to see Central play like we did last week. Pike rode up 42-27 now on Lanier. Fourth down, 18. Here's fourth down. Watch a draw. And long, 18 to go. Looking left, has a little time. Now the pressure it. comes, so they're going to get to him. Down will Jones go at the 31-yard line. Tallis, he takes over a big stop by the defense. to get the ball back, down by seven with 9.54 left in the game. Eli Whittington, number nine, and number 92, Barrow on the play. And good to see them young men get in there, get that tackle, stop him. Now we got to drive down the field. Got to. And we got to get our seven right here and score and tie this ball game up, give ourselves a chance. First down from Tennessee's own 31. Well, it could be a nice script for Trent Morris tonight. You can write a fourth quarter comeback. Handoff 
First time we've seen Henderson run the ball. We see him in the game back there. They'll hand it off, go left to him. He did pick up a couple. It'll be second down and eight. Yeah, uh, the timing on that play was off. Brad mentioned that a while ago, or it might have been Oz. But snapping the ball high, if he gets a, if if he gets that ball down and it's a clean handoff, Mason had a pretty good crease. But when your timing gets off in your play, you close your hose close up too quick on you. Morris with an empty set, shotgun. Looking to pass. And we'll go down the field for Henderson. It's a little bit out of his reach, incomplete. So a pretty good throw, just missed him. Third down. Yeah, he was open for a second, just overthrew him a little bit. Third and eight coming up, uh, thinking about Ninth grade starters and quarterback uh, getting his chance as a freshman. Obviously, Tyler Ellis did the same. Uh, most recent quarterback from years gone by. He just graduated last year. And if you go back, another guy named Trent. Trent Cochran Gill got his start. He ended up starting as a ninth grader back when he was a player here. That's right. And Trent Morris getting that start tonight as a ninth grader. QB. Pressure coming. He's trying to get out of the rush. He just got to throw it up for grabs, and he will, and it will be intercepted. Picked off by Bryce McLeod, and Borgard will have it in Tallahassee territory as they tackle him at the 42-yard line. All kinds of pressure, and with Morris under duress, he just heaved one up, hoping for the best, but there was double coverage. McLeod took advantage. Yeah, Trent really never had an opportunity to set his feet on that play. And, you know, for a freshman quarterback, you know, you got to give him a little bit of time to try to set his feet to get a throw. That's tough. I don't care if you're a senior quarterback. You know what I mean? Yeah. First down. 8.58 left in the football game. 21-14, Beauregard. Now with the ball at the Tigers, 42. Jones, Doolittle again. Up the middle, good defense by the Tigers there to grab him and take him down. And uh, that was number 92, big, number 92 oh, yeah. Brandon Barrow, along with some help from Carter Sayers. Carter's had a pretty good night tonight. Hasn't he has. He? He's had a really good night tonight. Had a huge sack down here on this end. You know, last week, they got, just wanted to mention, Vicente uh, Diego, Vincent Diego on the uh, front. He was the player of the week on the defensive line last week. He started nose guard tonight, too, uh, playing hard. Here's a run and another nice tackle on the left side by the Tigers. And that was Doolittle, who didn't get much. Yeah, and that, that was McCary making that the grab. Right, that was McCary. Um, third and long now, third down. If I'm a board guard, I'm content right here to keep the ball on the ground and punting if I have to. Third down play. Ten to go. Just saw Principal Brown. Uh, that's the... Uh, son of the former Principal Brown. Uh, Dickie Brown, longtime Principal Borgard, now Richard Brown Jr. is there. Good to see him tonight. Good friends of ours. Here's a throw down the field, wide open. He's holding, and he's going to take it in for a touchdown. Somehow he got lost in the coverage, and it was an easy throw and catch. Wow. Javon Holman with a grab, and Borgard goes ahead 27 to 14. Yeah, there was some miscommunication in the defensive backfield on that play. Forty-one yards on that pass and catch, and here comes the kick. Lugo. It's good. And it's twenty-eight to fourteen. Borgard. Seven minutes, twenty-two seconds left in the game with the Hornets up by two scores. Tallahassee Tigers football on WTLS, Tallahassee Times TV and Spectrum. Saturday, do it right with great steaks or boneless chicken breasts or a grilling favorite, 
smoked sausage. Throw on the fixins and you're ready for football. Get it all at cost plus 10% at either location. Tallahassee Superfoods on Gilmer Avenue or on Notasilva Road in East Tallahassee. Southeastern Insurance in Tallahassee is a local independent agent that can save you money, residential or commercial. Let them find a competitive rate and start saving now. Autos and trucks, mobile homes, and your family lake property. Plus coverage for all of your summertime lake toys, sea doos boats, ATVs, RVs, and bikes. Call them for a quote on your fishing and hunting lodge. Keep it local and get local service. Southeastern Insurance, LLC in Tallahassee. Call Roger Davidson or Star Cannon today, 334-283-4933. Score 94 and hit 106. Lugo kicks. McCoy to return it. And he's leveled at the 24 yard line. Down he goes. And it'll be Tallahassee ball there. They've got. A lot of work to do now with 7.15 left, down 28-14. Some other scores tonight. Hopeful is up 21-0 on Semmel. That game's now in the fourth quarter. Realtown leading 27-18. That game is now in the fourth quarter. And it's 42-27. Pike Road up on Lanier. That is in the third quarter, last check we had. 7.15 left in this one again, 28-14. Beauregard, pass out, caught. Across the 30, the 33 Wells on the catch. Picking up about seven. The Tigers gonna have to pretty much go to the passing game now with a little time left and down by two touchdowns. Yeah, we really don't have any choice. And so right here, you know, really win, lose, or draw. This is a good chance to work on your passing game. Morris will look to throw, and he will. Over the middle, nice throw and catch. Great catch by Joseph Hooks, and a really good throw, too, from Morris. Out to the 48-yard line. That was a late post route, wasn't it? Old yeah, post route. Kind of, yeah, a little bit more of a skinny post, I guess. He, he's uh, – Snagged that one out of there. Great job by Hooks showing his hands. Yeah, that was a super good play by Hooks right there. Impressive. First down, First down and the Tigers near midfield. We wind down near the midway mark of this final period of play. Morris with four receivers, three to his right, one to the left side. He rolls right, and now we'll have to run with it, and he will be tackled up at about the midfield stripe. A couple of yards on the play, second down and eight coming up. Looks like he's marking him at the 50. 50, yeah, somewhere right around in the 50. This is a heat break timeout. We'll keep it here as we've used up uh, our allotment of breaks here. Hold on for a moment. Remind you, the school board show brought to you by City Collision follows our community home health and hospice post game. We'll have Coach Mike Battles. We'll also have our Tallahassee Automotive Player of the Game, our C.J. Ledbetter Superman Award. Hope we make that decision in the next six minutes that it's somebody that brings us back and, and gets us a W tonight. Absolutely. Look forward to that tonight. Of course, it'll be followed by the Lindy's Football Report. And as we see it, Getting ready for the college game day tomorrow <coughs> with Lindy's show and Tallahassee football on the replay. We'll have Tallahassee at 8.30 following the Lindy's football report tomorrow morning, Saturday staple. And then it is Alabama versus South Florida. 11.30 airtime, 2.30 kick here on WTLS. Play action, looking to throw. And it's intercepted. And here they come down the left side with... Dixon, and that's the second pick tonight, and Beauregard may have just put the dagger in there. Yeah, that's going to be hard to overcome with five minutes left to go in the ball game. Brandon Bam Dixon, as they call him, put a bam on us there. And Borgard now can try to work the clock with this 28-14 lead. 5.39 left in the game. Started very well tonight, but starting to fade away here.
pass out. Holman, they've done this all night. He's going to have a first down almost, it looks like. Maybe he got it. He got to the 30. And I think that is enough to move the chains. Looks like it. And the official said, yep, stretch him out again. 5.15 to go in the game. Well, I will say this, regardless of what the outcome ends up being, we do have a player down being looked at in the cramps. Coach Battle's working on him himself. That uh, this game here is definitely an improvement for Tattlesey. Looks, looks like there's a flag over there, too. Yeah, it is a flag. We'll see. Eventually, this guy in the white hat will tell us what it is. Personal foul against Borgo. Why are these guys taking so long? This is what drives me crazy. Come on, move the ball and let's get going. Pick it up, step it off, and let's play ball. That's what we need to do, don't we? I would assume 15 so. yards is a penalty. I'm sure they're asking Coach Battles, was this, if it was a dead ball penalty, you just step off 15 after the play. They even got little white markers on the field. They can walk and count them as they go by, Michael. Just saying. Mike Battles. Well, it's, there's a, apparently more to it than uh, – meets the eye. We, we thought they'd just move on, but uh, there's a long conversation going on now with Coach Mike Battles and the head referee here. Now we'll step it off. All right. Uh, backs them up 15 to the 46. And they'll reset the chains, too. Five. <laughs> Got the clock mixed up now. It says 50 seconds. We're going to have to fix that. It was 518. Well, now it's 530. They put time back on it. I think they told them to do that. How's that first down? First down 10 for the Hornets. They had gotten the first down, so it's just a, a yardage oh, okay. gotcha. penalty, basically. Throw out the left side, Holman again. I'm going to run it all night, but it's been effective. It's more effective late than it was early as he's driven out of bounds inside the 40 to the Tallahassee 39. You know it's coming, but uh, they block very well out there and just can't seem to get a hold of it. He's always able to make at least one man miss. Well, in my opinion, on Borgard's side, I mean, I know it's working right now, but it's kind of dumb when you're up by two scores while you're not eating clock. Well, they're, they're run, it, as long as it's completed, it's like a running play to them. You see, easy, quick pitch and catch. Pump fake, they're going to go. Uh, penalty flag comes in, so they'll sack the quarterback, Will the Tigers. Yes. Number 99 for the Tigers, Michael Walker, but we'll see about the penalty, too. 438 left in the game. Holding is the call. Question is, do you want to take it or take the sack? Boy. I think I might take the sack, but I think Coach Battles is going to take the penalty. They'll get a down over. Back them up to the 49. It'll be second down and 12.
Running play with Doolittle. It's going to be taken down by Peters at about the 40. And it'll be third down. Third and four. Under four minutes left in the game. Quick pass over to Holton again. He's got the first down and right side he goes, out of bounds, inside the 20. Well, I'd like to maybe at the end of the game look at Javon Holman's numbers on catches. He's got a whole bunch of balls. He has indeed. I can tell you this, number eight is going to remember 99 from Tallahassee calls. Michael Walker just leveled the quarterback. 341. If this were college, they wind the clock again after he went out of bounds, but they don't here in high school. Tallahassee takes a timeout. This might be their final timeout. I'm not real sure. What do you got them with? One left. One? Okay. Yeah, not sure if the school board's accurate or not. We had a dispute over that earlier, if uh, they were actually doing a good job with that tonight. It's kind of tough to keep up sometimes with all the heat break timeouts and all that goes with it. Next week, we're on the road at Marbury. Got uh, Chilton County after that, and then homecoming with Elmore County. Panthers really... Got hammered tonight by Central of Clay County. And last check, it was 42-7. to seven. Was it, Did they end up scoring a punt? We never even saw a score on that? I hadn't seen them score yet. Now they, they might have. Yeah. Let's see if I can get an update. All my Elmore County friends quit sending them after a while. <laughs> <laughs> Can't blame them. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah, it's, it's been bad. Well, First Danny Horn's got him a good squad over there again in Lineville, Alabama. 42-6 is the most recent score. Why are they see. still passing? Here's a completion because it's working, I guess. Inside the 15, down to about the 13. And once again, it's Holman. He picked up eight. It's second and two. Uh, 3.22 left to play. I'd love to be able to step in front of that and return it all the way. I don't know why we don't come up and try to at least make a play on it. Uh, I guess we're worried he's going to run past us. Uh, run left side, do little. They may be blocking you off the line. I'm not sure. Not much there. It'll be third down and a long yard to go. 2.43 left in the game. Yeah, Jaden McKenzie was in on that tackle before it got going good. Borgard looks like they're going to get the W tonight. Proved a one and one in the region, three and one overall. Tannis is going to fall to zero and two in region play and zero and four. Doolittle makes his way through a couple of tacklers and goes into the end zone for the touchdown. 34-14. Borgard with 34 unanswered points in this one as they score again with 2:12 left. Josh Lugo will kick, and he will put it through again. Perfect tonight on extra points. 35-14, 2-12 left to play. Tallahassee trailing Borgard as the minutes wind down. We'll take another break. Tallahassee Tigers football on WTLS, Tallahassee Times TV, and Spectrum. Instant news. Immediate availability. 
It's here at your fingertips. TallahasseeTimes.com. Read it online. Follow it on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Stay up to date on all Tallahassee news, sports, socials, classifieds, and photos. Plus, get live video on all social platforms and Tallahassee Times TV on YouTube. Tallahassee Times. TallahasseeTimes.com. Hey, it's Brad Parker. And Jamie Bush at Parker Tire and Service Center. It's tailgating time. Don't let car trolls ruin your road trips. Let us help you with new Michelin, Uniroyal, BF Goodrich, and Toyo tires. Whether you're headed to the big game or just across town, change your oil, lube, and filter. And don't forget a checkup for your engine. Parker Tire and Service Center. 1508 Gilmer Avenue in Tallison. Keep up with the latest. Like and follow WTLS and Tallahassee Times on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. There's a flag on the play. Flag on the kickoff. McCoy was going to get another chance, but penalty flags blow it dead. And Bulgar have to back it up five and kick it again. 35-14, well, it looked really promising early, but things turned around in the second half. Tattlesee led 14-7 at the half, but Borgard has taken over the game and pretty much dominated this second half of action. But we've definitely seen improvement tonight. Hopefully it'll carry over as we go through the season. Still a lot of football left. It was a great start, 14-0, but 35 unanswered by the Hornets. It's turned it into a lopsided affair. 2 on 9 left to play as Lugo will now kick from the 35. McCoy and Roberts back. They switched up. Let's see if they kick it the other way this time. They do. McCoy comes up to catch it at the 20. 25, 30-yard line. 35. Still running. 40. Good return by Tremel McCoy to the 42. And that's where Tallahassee has the football. First and 10 with a minute 59 left to play. Yeah, it was a good hard run by Tremell. Looks like we putting our some of our JV guys in. Well, maybe not. Yeah, actually we do have some JV guys in. Henderson, the handoff, getting a little push from his lineman. Got it to the 45. He picked up about four, second down. Yeah, just letting some of the younger guys get a little bit of playing time right here it's toward the end of the ball game. He's got it pretty much his uh, starting line in there, maybe a couple of different players. <laughs> Looks like Brody Wisner might have went in at center for Joel. And uh, Hayden Johnston getting a little work, too, I think, uh, as one of the tackles. And maybe get a couple other names in there as they're starting to switch it up a little bit. Mason Henderson again. Can't break away. Of course, Mason has stepped up and got some varsity work with his impressive play. He played very well in his JV debut. And, Got his first varsity touchdown last week. Under a minute to go, it's now third down. And uh, he's done really well. Getting some playing time on the varsity. And off hooks right side. And he will be down at about the 46, unable to get there. That will probably do it. Yeah, they're not going to snap it again. That's going to be it. Tallahassee falls to Borgard, 35-14, your final score. We'll come back with our community home help and hospice post game after this on WTLS. Score 94, That's hit 106.
arrived here in a patient's home. Tested. Probably should do a reboot on that thing every week. I don't know why I did that. This is Clint McBroom from First Methodist in Tallahassee. I'd like to invite you to join us for worship on Sundays with a contemporary worship at 8.50 a.m. in our fellowship hall or a traditional worship at 11 a.m. in our sanctuary. You can also join us by watching our live stream at fumctallahassee.com. We would love to have you come and worship the Lord with us on Sunday mornings at 8.50 or 11 a.m. A simple flight can create connections and memories like no other. That's why flying local matters. The convenience, less hassle, and more time with those that matter the most. Fly local. Fly MGM. The Post Game Show is brought to you by Community Home Health and Hospice Care. Testing, one, two. We got you now. All right. As we return, and 35-14 final, Borgard beats Tannelsey here at Jay Hanebron Stadium. And Aja got some numbers. Yeah, let me jump back over here. I was looking at the leaders. So, Tallahassee, first down's nine. Uh, Rush is 27 for 189 yards. Uh, five for 17 for 85 yards. Uh, jumping over to Borgard, 16 first downs, 32 rushes for 163 yards. 13 of 19 for 159 yards. Uh, kind of went cold in the second half. Yeah. Um, Give me some individuals on us, and we'll try to determine our player of the game. So our leaders, uh, Joseph Hooks had eight rushes for 110 yards, and he had a touchdown. Uh, Trent had uh, nine rushes for 60 yards and a touchdown. Um, Brody had a pat, one reception for 49 yards. Uh, Joseph Hooks had one reception for 14 yards. So... Um, I don't know, I guess Joseph, Joseph Fuchs. Fuchs is your player yeah. of the game, yes. Yeah. <laughs> the Tallahassee Automotive player of the game, Joseph Fuchs. He really did have a good night tonight. He, he ran did. hard, and he was impressive with the ball in his hands. He made a nice catch, too, on that play. And, of course, Joseph's one of those guys yes. that plays on both sides of the football. That's right. So, uh, Joseph Fuchs, your Tallahassee Automotive player of the game. And congratulations to him and, and what was a tough loss for Tallahassee after they played so well early. Let's go down the field. Brad Davis with Coach Mike Battles. Coach, um, it's a week where the team came out and started out much unlike the first three games. It was a lot of things were clicking. Team was, team was playing really, really well, playing hard. And I know they played hard through the, through the second half as well. Borgard just got away from us there on a couple of plays uh, the second half. But uh, I, I think it's probably, probably growth on the football team, a very young football team. Well, we got better. You know, we came out and did the things we wanted to do. Our defense played well. We just ran out of gas. You know, we're playing a lot of kids. We're asking them to do a lot of things. They're young. They're learning, and, you know, they, they, they don't come off the field. You know, our, our receivers are our DBs. Our D-line is our O-line and vice versa. And, you know, Beauregard's got a real talented team. And, you know, when we finally ran out of gas and, and you could see a couple of our kids starting to cramp, and that wasn't from not being well hydrated. That's from being out on that field for about 115 plays. And so, you know, but we got better tonight. You know, we got better. I think we're going to continue. You know, we're going to keep practicing, keep working. Something good is going to happen sooner or later. Hopefully it'll be next week, but we're going to go right. We're going we're to evaluate film on Sunday, watch film of Marbury, and then we'll be ready to go Monday. And, uh, you know, I expect our team to do like they've done the last five weeks. Come to work Monday. Let's get better. Let's go keep this thing and try to win a ball game. You know, we, we improved. And I know maybe to the, to the common eye, you know, we lost 35-14. But I saw a lot of improvements in our blocking and throwing the ball and our receivers running routes and, to, and our defense at times, we played a lot better. We've got a lot of room for improvement there. But, you know, we ain't, we ain't going to quit. we got a lot of football left to play, and it's not in Tallahassee to quit. So, I mean, this is, you know, this is a tough thing. It's tough for the kids. You know, it's tough for them because they get to hear all the nonsense and all the stuff like that. But, uh, you know, our kids have done well, and I'm proud of them. And, uh, you know, some good things for to happen. Appreciate your time, Coach. Uh, thank you, Brad. Thank you, Coach Mike Battles. And I like what he said about there. Uh, he, he's got some passion in what he's saying, and he's right. This team looked better tonight. I know everybody wants to win a football game, but this team came out and uh, played their tails off tonight. And unfortunately, it just didn't go our way. 
but uh, you're trying to improve. There's no doubt this team improved tonight. Look, I'm going to jump in. Phillips said it before the game. See improvement, and it happened. And, and you can elaborate on it, but you, you, you said it before the game, and that's what happened. We saw it. I thought we got better. I mean, I'm like Coach Battles. Did we come out as a winner? No. But I think we have some things we can build on. You know what I mean? And until late in the game, we were really in the game, and we could have still won the ball game. So, um, Oz, thanks for that um, because that's what I wanted to see. Did we improve? And I thought we improved not only on offense, but I thought our defense played a little bit better until they got tired out there in the fourth quarter. Yeah, he's right. We, we just ran out of juice. I mean, that's, that is. We've got – look at the number of players and what they have to do go both ways. I was impressed. I liked it. I, like, I even liked the play calling. Uh, it, it, we need to execute a little bit better at times, but play calling was good. Offense did well. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of the guys, to be honest with you. Me too. I'm glad they had some fight in them. That's right. For those who stayed to the finish, they can uh, hang around and watch the Pride of Talos. You perform their regular show, which is coming up next here at Jay Hotterbrine Stadium. We'll be turning it over to the studio for the school board show, presented by City Collision. And uh, that'll be uh, with the gang uh, at the WTLS station studios here for the next uh, about an hour. Uh, they'll take your calls, too, so check in. We'll have scores from some big games around tonight coming up in here in just a few. Well, uh, once again, we'll look forward to next week. We'll be back with you on uh, Friday night from Marbury next week with our CBNS Bank countdown to kickoff starting around 6 o'clock. Hope you can join us there. If not, certainly on the broadcast and the webcast here on WTLS, Tallahassee Times TV and Spectrum. For the crew here, the Tiger Nation guys, uh, golly, there's a lot of them. Uh, we got Jude Rogers joining tonight. Appreciate his help. Philip Beckham, Courtney Thornton, and uh, had some assistance too tonight from Anthony Gioso. We uh, appreciate our producer, Leanne Butler, for Philip Nelson, Brad Davis, and Stephen Oz Osborne, Michael Butler, thanking you once again for listening and watching. Your final score once again, Beauregard 35, Tallahassee 14. Did I get everybody? I hope I did.